and I thought this was hilarious. There was like, uh, it was like, uh, take corn red and paint the cape, and it changed it to put red beans in your mouth, <laughs> you know, and it's just like, what the, what the actual? And I was like, this is hilarious. I run a tournament where you're going to come and hang out, you know, you're going to make some friends, and if you don't, if you don't make friends, I'm going to make you make friends. Yeah. You know, because like I think I feel like a lot of events I go to that like people like play their games and then just go home they don't stay for the awards they don't like hang about and clap for everybody the typical warhammer tournament experience <clears throat> is part of the reason why i haven't done a typical warhammer tournament in the last two years yeah hey everyone welcome back to the channel thank you so much for joining us on yet another great hall saga where we're bringing in some guests from the community to talk normally about their journey in warhammer how they get started on things like youtube etc and today god it's rough isn't it <laughs> inviting me oh my lord we've scraped in the barrel right now yeah i think there's a hole in the barrel at this point we've got <laughs> mr mikey from hellstorm wargaming hello fame. everyone hi i'm i'm genuinely actually very happy to have you here I know. <coughs> Are you okay? Are you okay? Yeah, I was getting Don't emotional. Cry. Don't cry. I'm getting all emotional about having you in the studio for a change. How was the last time we collabed? Was it like six years ago? Well, so this is. We'll, we'll get into this stuff as part of the as part of the of the video, obviously. But I've actually known Mikey for a hell of a long time. I know a lot of you think that there is beef between raw us. Beef. I love raw beef. Actual like deep mm. fried beef. That doesn't. That's not the case. Especially saying nasty things about me, and I say only lovely things. I mean, that's a lie. And then and then everyone's just like, wow, Liam's such a bad guy. If you said lovely things about me, I'd be genuinely quite concerned, to be honest with you. True. I yeah. am Northern. We don't do that. So if you're, <laughs> if you're watching this video at the point where it first goes live, thank you so much for being a channel member. Channel members will get access five days early. If you're watching this after the fact, if you want to catch any future sagas early, uh, then you can become a channel member. Um, Click that join button, baby. There's, and there's links below. Uh, we've also, as always, linked all of Mikey's socials below. We'll link his channel, his Instagram, his Twitter. Anything else you want me to add? Anything else we want me to add below? No, nope. that's just a Kodak moment. You know. <laughs> we'll link all that stuff below as well, and you can go become a flash? member. You can go be no, it didn't flash. No, oh. you can go become a member of Hellstorm World Gaming as well if you want to. Better. Fuck. <laughs> that was horrible. Right? That's a Kodak <laughs> moment. You know, it was a good time. Uh, anyway, I'll remember that forever. You came all the way down this morning just for us. I did. Thank yeah. you so much, mate. Yeah, a very long drive. Five, <laughs> five hours to get here. Just raw dog dip, mate. Yeah. No podcast. No music. Just drove. Complete silence? Silence. Did you stop for food? No. All the way down? Raw dog. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, have you seen that meme? Like raw dog in flights, just the jet two table? No. No, it's funny. It's funny. Mm. I, I'm not um, I'm not one of those trendy hip people that keeps up with memes and stuff, mate. You should. You should. So Mikey good. Mikey has his own channel on YouTube called Health on Wargaming. Um, I do. Which I became aware of very, 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 very early into my YouTube journey, mm. actually. Um, I think you probably launched your channel before I launched mine. I, I think reckon. so. I think because I think, are we allowed to mention past channels? Yes. I think you were like still with Visicast at the time. Yeah. Or like doing stuff with Visicast. Yeah. You know? So that's how I started yeah, yeah. with YouTube. You were, you were the guy when he was doing 10 things the guy does in a tournament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were the that guy. Yeah, yeah, that was me. <laughs> I was the bad guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, So Vizicast, I, I moved back down this way from the army in 2014. Mm. And I think I got back in, I think I started playing with Vizicast 2015. I launched my channel summer 2017. Look at you now. Roughly. And I think you were doing things before. We, I think we met properly for the first time at No Retreat? Or was it Warhammer Fest? Uh, it might have been I Warhammer Fest at Rico. Yeah, because I don't think it was no retreat. I think we knew. I think each we knew already. each other no retreat. Yeah. It might have been Warhammer Fest at Rico. I think it was Warhammer Fest. Yeah. And you had Dan with you. Yes. And yeah. It was like a weird, weird, weird talk where they only took like three pieces of terrain for each table. <laughs> yeah, that was the one. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. So yeah. yeah, I think that was when we first met, which was what 2016, 17. It must have been. Yeah, 2016, Ooh. I reckon. You're getting old. <laughs> no. Well, you are. I know. So, so <laughs> Hellstorm has been running for a long time. Mm, um, OG. So do you want to talk, do you want to tell people about what Hellstorm Wargaming is? Oh, what is it is or the history of? Because it's gone through like four iterations. We, I mean, we've got time. I know. Three hours, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so Hellstorm Wargaming, I started Hellstorm Wargaming, uh, I think, I don't even know when it started. It was just before Warhammer Live, whenever that was. There's a time, probably like 2016, something like that. 2017. Yeah. And... Um, I was like really interested in Twitch once upon a time. Okay. Not now. I was like, I really, I started watching a lot of live streamers, watching people like, uh, like Soda Poppin playing like League of Legends and stuff, and WoW or whatever. And um, I was another guy I used to watch a lot. 
he was like really big on Twitch at the time. I can't remember his name now, which is really bad, but he used to do like a coffee morning, which I don't know, that sounds like a good idea for a show. <laughs> Um, you should do that. I should do. I should should do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I started watching Twitch a lot, and I was like, no one's really like streaming Warhammer. And yeah. If you if you like been on Twitch for a while, you know there's like a Warhammer category. There didn't used to be. There didn't be hardly any categories outside of games. There was basically uh, like all the games, all the popular games, and then creative, which was like just everything else. It was like there was no just chatting or anything, and like creative, it was like just full of everything. And I was like. Well, there's a couple of people painting. That sounds quite cool. No one's doing like gaming content. Yeah. So I bought, went out and bought a, two C920s, the best webcams. Yes, I had there. one of those. Yeah, I still have my, my first one. One of them broke, but I still have it. I still use it for like, I think I use it as like a, a camera on my desk at, at the studio or whatever. And then I was like, well, no one else is doing this. So I'm going to get a mic stand and stand it on my kitchen table and uh, put the camera on it and play card games as like a tester. But then I'll play like Kill Team and then I'll play Warhammer. And that's like basically how it started. And now I was streaming, like, I think I was streaming like one game a week. And then I was streaming like painting like for a couple of days a week as well. And then I was like, I'm not growing, this is shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like watching uh, other content on YouTube. And I was like, wait a minute, this is a live stream, but it's on YouTube. That's weird. And then there was like, I was like, I'm trying to do battle reports. What are other channels doing? And there's obviously like the OGs, like Mini Wargaming and Tabletop Tactics, when they were like, I think Tactics had like 40,000 subscribers when I was like, when I first started. And I was like, maybe I should do something like that. So I started making battle reports on YouTube. And I was like, huh, that's actually way more popular. And I kind of exploded in popularity. I had like 300 subs or something. And then Mini Wargamer in the UK. And I'd just been to No Retreat, the first one I went to. I think it was like, no Retreat 5, which if people don't know, No Retreat is SM Battle Reports, like invite only, paint your armies really nice and go to a cool tournament in Gibraltar. Yeah. And I met Kerry, who was working for Warhammer TV at the time, and that, a mini wargamer were like, oh, we're doing a Battle Report 1, well, does anyone want to play? And I was like, I would love to come down, please. <laughs> and then, I, so I think I got a good word in because Kerry was there at the time. And then I played a game with Matt from New Wargaming in Warhammer World. It's still on YouTube. It's, it's very bad oh, really? quality because the microphones they're using, obviously, because they're just using lapel mics, but they've done no... They're, either the, the mics are just picking up everything or they've done, like, no sound effects. Yeah. It's just, like, use noise suppression or anything like that. Uh, and that was... That came out, I think, December of the first year I'd started going on YouTube. And I got, like, a 1,000 subs in a day or something. Okay. Which is, like, obviously, like, crazy. You know, a thousand subs in a day is mad nowadays. Yeah, like, like I, I, I just exploded. I don't know what I did. I beat Matt. Maybe that was it. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I took my nice, I took my Blood Ravens down, and I played Matt, and I was like, yeah, wicked. Uh, that's cool. The game came out, and that kind of exploded, and that kind of sent me on a trajectory of like, oh, YouTube's quite cool. Yeah, I appreciate that was a long story to get to that point. But then <laughs> after that, it kind of writes itself. We all played Warhammer with our friends. Lockdown, we all start doing talking head content and we all live stream as well sometimes. Yeah. And then that here I am. I mean, to be fair, you say that we all we all do it. I was like late to the boat to everything. Mm. Like I started doing battle reports when everyone else was already doing battle reports. I started doing talking head content like at the end of COVID. Yeah. Like, I missed the boat every time, to be fair. You started doing live streams on Twitch as well, if you remember. Oh, we, we, so we did do live streams on Twitch. Um, Once upon, I helped you set up your live stream. You did. You, you did. It was talking like, head like content. A three hour call. Me and Mikey were doing um, a different Mikey. Mikey. P. Yeah, we were doing live stream uh, content on Twitch originally because YouTube just didn't really have like people. I think people often forget it wasn't all that long ago that YouTube just didn't really have live stream support. Have the infrastructure for it now. And they definitely didn't have things like memberships, gifted memberships, super mm. chats. That just didn't mm. exist. And the only real streaming platform back then was Twitch. And I think YouTube probably saw. An opportunity for a ton of of revenue there. Yeah, if they and now, can pull people and now they're like TikTok. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know exactly. They're like Twitch is really bad, and then Twitch are like just chat themselves, <laughs> and now they're like, well, TikTok's really big, so we'll do that instead. Yeah, and they're just letting live streaming die. But, that's but another conversation. But <laughs> well, for growth, exactly, hundred yeah. percent. So, so I think I first when I first got to know you, which I think was probably Rico. It was yeah. definitely more prominent on Twitch at the time. I think you were still doing live stream games on Twitch. Yeah, because I was still doing. Because basically, what happened was is I was like doing like live stream games and then painting, but also I was doing like recorded videos as well yeah, on yeah. YouTube. And I think it, I think it quickly became apparent that if you put content on YouTube, tell them that you live stream, they might come over. So I grew from like. 10 viewers to like 30 or 40 quite quickly 
doing live live Warhammer content, which only Warhammer Live were doing at the time. Yeah. Um, and yeah, but then the problem was is I used to stream from a like a venue, and me and the venue had a bit of a falling out at the time. We're all good now, but we had a bit of a falling out, and uh, so I couldn't stream games at home very often. So I s stuck to like recording them. Yeah, yeah. Like some of my oldest videos are in my old shared house, and there's like a microwave and an iron and some <laughs> food in the background. You know, we've all been there. We've yeah. all been there somewhere. I, I never forget the amount of grief I got because we filmed in my kitchen and the cu the, the oven was like up mid like midway up on the cupboard. Yeah. You yeah. know, that was like, like chest height ovens. Like American cupboard. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oven, yeah. In, in the house we, when we first moved back to Anderson Lampton. And there was, on one of the on one of the bat reports, I got so much grief in the comment section because there was a tea towel folded over the kitchen handle. How crazy. dare I leave that That's in the crazy. background? That's gross. Yeah. Uh, but we've all been there. Like, I put out uh, like a studio tour the other day. I know, I saw it. Yeah, I watched it. Thank you. And like, you know, I don't think my, my studio has got a lot of room for working. There's also not a lot of room in there. But like, there's a lot of places I can improve. And everyone's like, wow, you've got so much stuff. And I was like, yeah, because I've been streaming for like, yeah. nearly, probably like nearly 10 years now. Yeah. It's just like, I've just built all this shit on. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I've got a cool fancy cam camera, but I've also got the C920 still on top of my monitor that I use for meetings when I'm, when I'm there, you know what I mean? We, um, yesterday, Joe and I were in here for four hours cleaning this place. Sure. For two reasons. Sure. I'm, I'm coming. One, it needed it because it was fucking gopping. But two, I was like, Mikey's coming and I want it to be really impressive when he walks in. Yeah. So that was part of the thing. He can glow and be like, well, well, yours is all right. Yeah. <laughs> There's your pallets under the table, what the fuck? And then uh, over there, there's a you got you guys can't see it, but there's a, a load of like plastic boxes which is literally full of all the old shit from failed tech experiments. Nice. Old camera gear, old microphone gear, where you slowly but surely afford you can afford the upgrade and you buy the upgrade. Yeah, it goes in the box somewhere. Yeah, and you, know? you keep it because you're like, I never know if I might need that. What if, what if that one breaks? Exactly. You need a webcam. And then and I'm like, and I look at some of these improvements that we've made and some of these changes that we've made, I'm like, I bet the people at home have no idea or yeah. care that we've made yeah. these changes. Someone was like, How do you I can't believe how I can't believe how much money you make? And I was like, bro. Yeah. I've been doing, I've been buying one camera a year. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, I don't make, people people in what have you don't make that much money, you just spend it on cameras, okay? Because we want to make it better. You just well, spend it on content. Content. Yeah. But like, yeah, it's just funny. It's just funny, like where you think about where you started from. I mean, literally, a mic stand because I used to be in a band, so I had a mic stand already. A, a webcam. I used to use bloody. I used to do commentary with uh, Turtle Beaches. You know, oh. like the Xbox 360 headsets. Yeah, yeah. I still have those. The Call of Duty Modern Warfare Two ones, the Jeez, original yeah. Modern Warfare Two. Like, or yeah, Modern Warfare or Call of Duty Ghost or something, like the special edition ones. Yeah. I still have those in the studio, just in case. Well, I, I, learned, I learned most of my craft from Winters, obviously, for battle reports. I was just using a phone. I'm going to say, where's your phone? These aren't phones. I know, yeah. <laughs> Some people continuously make improvements. Some yeah. people just still use phones. Yeah, I mean, if it works, But, it but modern day phone, to be fair. Boomer moment, isn't it? It's modern big, day phone is loving to bits. incredible. Yeah, he's loving to bits. He's just a big boomer. He's got his phone, it works, you know? Yeah. He goes on Facebook. Records battle reports. <laughs> <laughs> so I saw your studio tour the other day. Hellstorm Wargaming now is obviously very different to Hellstorm Wargaming of eight, nine years ago. Mm -hmm. But I would say that even the con... I mean, obviously, if we excuse the obvious Twitch to YouTube, the content's now very different to the yeah. Hellstorm Warming of, Wargaming of eight years ago. Yeah, because I was doing battle reports, like everyone was. Mm -hmm. And then I was doing them... Because I moved and then had like a permanent setup at home. Yeah. Um, and then... I was like, the only video that wasn't about a report was a book review, where I do... New codex type yeah, stuff. Yeah, man reads books. Yeah. You know? Whoa, that's so cool, turn the page. Whoa. You know, <laughs> I would clearly research for this video. And then, um, yeah, so basically, that that happened, and then 2020, guess what happened? Yeah. Party time, everyone's at home, great yeah. time. Um, so I was, I was like working from home, and I uh, obviously couldn't film, like most people. Um, because about reports, you need other people, yeah. Because you need a partner to play. You can't play by yourself unless you get on, on the wrong website. Yeah. Forced Georgie to play a couple of games. Did actually play a battle report by myself. Everyone did. But it was the, do you know, the magazines, the, the Age of Sigma magazine, where you get like the start of the set, and it's like three Stormcast and five Nighthorn. Played that by myself. Great time. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, I was like, well, I can't really make that sort of content. So what sort of content can I make? And I was like, I'll make an April Fool's one, where I'm like, here's a dry palette. You know, little, little, you know, I used to do like loads of like bad acting at school. I was in drama class and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, if I make like a funny April Fool's joke where I've got a dry palette and it's a wet palette, but sand instead of a sponge. Hilarious content. Very bad. <laughs> but I was like, well, that was pretty fun. That's kind of the type of content I make. Maybe I make more like talking head content. And I used to paint on stream anyway. Yeah. I started streaming and painting again on YouTube. 
and then I used to talk to the camera and make videos. And the first video I made was like coffee time, which again, <laughs> I got an idea. I should really remember that creator. <laughs> uh, if, uh, it's going to eat you up now later. until you remember his name as well. Yeah, I'll remember later. <laughs> So, if you're watching this now, go back to the battle report that we did, and I'll tell you that. He would have Googled it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I was, like, making... I started doing, like, coffee time. The first one was, like... I was, like, I'm going to make news of the week. What's happened in the wargaming industry this week? And it was the the Katachan kernel that yeah. came out, and it was 150 quid. And I was, like, that's a cool story. And uh, it got, like, a 1,000 views. And I think at the time I had, like, 12, 15K subs or something yeah. like that. I was, like, oh, it's all right. It's that's cool. reasonable. Yeah, next week I'll do it again. And my friend Innis from now Stat Check, he wasn't part of Stat Check at the time. He's uh, like the captain of Team Scotland and stuff. He was doing a big poll about, uh, because 8th edition was on its way out and 9th edition was on the way. He did a big poll about what is the worst army in the game or the worst unit. And I was like, that's really interesting. Maybe I'll keep an eye on it. And then a couple of days passed. And uh, he was doing like, he was like, he basically got like every, every bad unit from each codex and he was like pitting them against each other so people were voting on each one. And uh, I was like, that's a really cool video idea. So I was like, Innis, you want to come on and like talk about what people have found and the votes and stuff and like tell us about these really terrible units in the game. And uh, I released that video and it's got like 70,000 views now or something. It was like a cra crazy big video for my second coffee time where I'm overexposed in the start of the video. I'm kind of there, you can kind of see C920, C920 webcam. Uh, you can kind of see where I'm at, but then it was just kind of like bad, bad, but like not like, Terrible, like just like graphics moving around, like yeah, stuff yeah. moving around on screen. You know, like uh, we did, we had the set up as like a tournament bracket type thing, and it was like, well, this one beat that one. It goes here. A very home video. Yeah, it yeah. was. It was. I think it, for the time, I'd not done too much editing like that before. I thought it was okay, and I put that one out, and that did really well. And then I started doing coffee time every week, which is me talking about news or interesting things that I thought about that week, and um, I did that for like I think a year straight, or I was doing a video every single Sunday. And then as things opened back up, I started doing battle reports again, and then it closed down again, and then it opened back up, and then it closed down again. <laughs> Everyone knows what happened. The it's joys of shit, COVID yeah. in the UK, yeah. Yeah, it's terrible. Um, so I started doing that, and then I started doing, um, I think because I was doing so many battle reports afterwards, I didn't have time to like make a dedicated video as well. I was like, a battle report every week, a dedicated video every week. That's a bit too much. Yep. Because I was still working at the time. So I was like, started live streaming a lot more. So I was like, I'm still doing a bit of painting. Why don't I like, solidify this as like a... It's a painting show on a Monday. Um, and I did that with um, Mo Holt Miniatures for a long time. Uh, he wanted to do his own thing, so he moved on. I went full time uh, because I got made redundant at work, which was cool. You were forced into it. Yeah. Or forced into it almost. Yeah. So I was like, basically, it was, I used to work at the university. I was an engineer, very, very skilled. <laughs> <laughs> but essentially, they went, right, we're, we're losing money. We're offering voluntary redundancy. But deal you know they were okay. like nudge nudge yeah like hint, hint. we didn't gonna do compulsory if not enough people take it yeah so i was like okay i'll give it a go so they basically i got made redundant i, I kind of applied for redundancy but they were kind of telling me otherwise and i got a, a decent packet and i was like wages let's give it a go five months i can do this probably um, and we'll we'll see what happens. So, you, so the package around. gave you the five month securities, what you're Pretty saying? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. So like, I, I took, I, I, they gave me a pay packet, and I was like, if I split this up and I spend it wisely, I could probably got like five six months maybe. And then the day that I accepted the uh, the severance, uh, jo my girlfriend Georgie moved in because <laughs> she moved from uh, from home from Birmingham to Sheffield to study. So I was essentially jobless. She was jobless. <laughs> and I was like, you know Strong. what, babe? You know what, babe? I'm going to try YouTube. <laughs> she was like, yeah, cool. And then cried. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've just been making videos ever since. I started live streaming a lot more. Um, and like battle reports. Essentially what happened was, is like I moved Georgie in and I used to film in my dining room. Mm -hmm. And the dining room is kind of like alcove to the front room. So it's essentially the front room and the dining room together, which is like half our house. And understandably, we find it quite difficult when she's like coming home from work and she can't like use half the house. She's like sneaking upstairs because she don't want to make noise and stuff. So I was like, I need somewhere to move this. And that's when I eventually moved to Sanctuary. It's like, we have our, my own, well, we, I have my own space there, which is like my little studio. Um, but Bat Reports, I found are kind of like taking far too much effort yep. compared to like, 
making content about Warhammer. Yep. Like, don't get me wrong, I love playing Battle Reports all the time. It's great fun, always a great time. The videos are always really fun. But I, I've personally never found great success with it. And I know other people have, you know. Um, like you yourselves, you found great success with live streaming Battle Reports. Channels like Play on Tabletop have found great success re relatively recently compared to most channels that are still doing it in like edited Battle Reports. And I've no, I've always kind of like, it's been like hit and miss a lot. You know, it's like sometimes I'm like, look, this is sick. And then sometimes I'm like, I just spent three weeks working on that and it's done shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so yeah, so like I went from ex basically exclusively bat reports to talking head and sometimes I do bat reports type deal. Yeah. And a lot of that's live stream. A lot of my videos are things that have been brought up on stream or like something that I'm working on that I want to share type deal. You know, like a, like... I kind of moved to more like a mixture of like hobby, news, drama, news, and a battle report on the side rather than that being like my main focus. How would you feel? I, I would, I, I'd be interested <coughs> to know how you feel about this description, but I would now describe your channel and your content of your channel as kind of more modern YouTube style. Yeah, yeah. Than I think a lot of hobby channels. So a lot of hobby channels I think that exist currently, whether they do talking head content or uh, painting content or battle reports are kind of hobby channels, right? Mm. They're clearly hobby channels and it's quite, Neat and tidy, it's quite minimalistic often. Maybe a couple of bits of lower thirds graphics and that sort of stuff yeah, where yeah. you get like the little name that pops up and stuff. But otherwise, it's, I mean, these are very, um, they're just kind of edited with three cameras, as you, as you guys know. There'll be a lower thirds element, that'll be it. There's nothing fancy. Sure. But well, you're. This is a podcast. Yeah, of, you know yes, I mean? it is. It's a absolutely. saga. It's a podcast. It is a podcast, absolutely. Yeah. But even if I, when I used to make Talking Heads content, uh, which I don't do so much at the moment because I didn't see much success with Talking Heads mm. actually. Um, it, again, minimal lower thirds, quite clean, some zoom in and out of the camera, but minimal. Sure. Whereas yours is obviously, well, I say obviously, if you haven't seen it, check some of the content out that Mikey's made. But Mikey's is, is a lot more, uh, at times it's a lot more explosive and I, that's why I would call it a lot more modern day YouTube. Mm. So camera comes in hard, like, like little silly graphics coming up, GIFs that come up on screen. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is that by design or is that just because you prefer it or do you do it on purpose? Like, is that something so, you do because you think YouTube wants it or because you like to do it or? So I try to make content that I like, you know, like. That you would watch. Would, would I watch this? Yeah, yeah. Would I enjoy it? And I, I, my style has changed as I've got older and my like enjoyment of different types of content's changed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like before I used to watch a lot of, a lot of Warhammer content. So it reflected that. I used to be handhold camera like everybody else you know yeah. and then I was like okay static cameras like everybody else and uh, but then I kind of like moved on and I started watching like more for lack of a better term generic content yes. you know like gaming content mainstream almost yeah so like so people who make videos that are like related to video games whether it's like a challenge or whatever not like Call of Duty or just like weird games but also just like yeah like more mainstream YouTubers but also because I was a Twitch streamer, I started getting into people who made streamed on Twitch and made videos from that for YouTube. Mm -hmm. So there's a guy that I was watching called Alpha Gaming. He's now called Senpai Gaming. You might have heard of him, Harris Heller. I've heard of Senpai Gaming. 100%. Yeah, so he did a lot of like stream. He does like streamer help content. Okay. Of like you need this microphone because they pay me to tell you. But also sometimes it's like you need this and you need to do this for your. Yeah, content. I know. I know. I do know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. But he's got blonde. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blonde, yeah. His, his, his content is amazing. He reacted to a video from another streamer called Ludwig, who is now a huge inspiration of mine. Um, and he was like, he made a video of like, if you want to be a streamer, watch this video. It was like a couple of years ago. And he'd basically just gone full time during COVID. He was like big because he was making like Among Us content at the time, but he doesn't do that now. But it was the, at the time it was super popular. And I watched his video about like how to uh, how to be a good streamer, but also how to be a good streamer to, that makes content. Yeah. And he called it like the yoink and twist, which I say now. But, and basically what that is, if you don't know what that I mean by that, is taking content that you like that's really popular and twisting it and making your own and adding a spin that's interesting. So like he looked at loads of content at the time was like letting my chat use my credit card to buy loads of stuff on Amazon. And, they, and he twisted it to be like giving my chat an hour to spend everything on Amazon. And it was like a little cool twist. And I was like, that's really fascinating. I've never thought about content in that way. And then instantly I did chat, could buy, use my credit card to buy any Warhammer merch. And that was like a terrible video, which is very fun. <laughs> it didn't do that well. It lost loads of money, but I let 
a live stream chat, Twitch chat at the time, uh, spend a thousand pounds on random Warhammer stuff from random places. Yeah. So like Redbubble, like they buy me like coasters that said like, come to Chaos, we have cat girls. <laughs> or like uh, a flag which looks really precarious because it's a black flag with a double eagle on it it's very bad but it's obviously the imperial eagle yeah, of course. if you don't know that you don't know that <laughs> it looks really sketchy there's like a car decal a pink space marine cutout um, and then like uh, a pillow and then someone bought me a custom uh, body pillow with my face on it which is still in my studio and I was like ever since that and I was like this is really fun and it's really it's like content that I'm starting to enjoy but it's having that like Warhammer twist on it. And that's yeah. what I would say I do now. I, a lot of the time, unless it's like news or drama or whatever, a lot of the content that I make is kind of like looking at what other people are doing, but making it Warhammer related. Yeah. And you'll find a lot of big YouTubers that do that. Like a prime example, I, I analyzed Warhammer thumbnails and I looked at like Squidmar, for example, one of the biggest Warhammer YouTubers now. A lot of their thumbnails, a lot of their video concepts are very similar to a YouTuber called Ryan Trahan, who is one of the big YouTubers. He's like the YouTuber's sweetheart like guy. He makes like, he's got like 20 odd million subscribers. Every video gets like 15 million views. And it's like, uh, he makes content that's like going to every one star hotel in Dakota or whatever, I don't know. Like going to every one star hotel at Disneyland. And then Squidmar is like rating every one star paintbrush on Amazon. And I'm like, He's doing it. He's doing the thing. <laughs> he's doing, he's he's doing, doing what you're that, doing. He's doing what I'm doing. He's doing a bigger scale. He's doing <laughs> a better scale. But it's, it's kind of like that thing. It's like, I think when people want to make a Warhammer channel, and again, this is a real long answer. I said we've we got, we got an hour. We've got to move well, on. Well, we're good. I was like... We've got time for you, mate. Yeah. Um, <laughs> when people st want to be a Warhammer YouTuber, they make Warhammer content. Yeah. And the trick to get big is to make YouTube content with Warhammer in it. And that Warhammer oh. is a as a vessel for funny memes and plain, dumb shit. Plain Warhammer content is just never going to be viral, really. No. It can be it can be viral within the Warhammer community, and some videos from other channels I've seen have done that, where within the community itself, it's gone relatively viral for, for reasons. Mm. But typically, actually, it's not the case. Yeah. You're not going to... And, you know, these... It's we, very niche case. It's very, a lot of the time, accidental. Yeah. But something's, like, super popular, but it's just, like... Painting the thing that so you, that so it, it'd be fair to say now when you're making these these new videos it's something that you're doing and you're just having fun once you're making it right mm -hmm. so how do you feel if you make one of these videos that's loads of fun and you put it out there and it and it doesn't do doesn't what, like it tanks yeah yeah so there's one that I did recently um, which was uh, again yoinked and twisted um, a guy made a cake but he followed Google he translated the recipe seventy times. And I did the similar, where I took a Warhammer TV presenter painting crew, and Elliot Payne followed the guide, and I translated it in Google 70 times. Because there's, yeah. like, there's like websites you can do that now. It's very funny. It just translates it to 70 different languages and back to English. And I thought this was hilarious. So it was like, uh, it was like uh, take corn red and paint the cape. And it changed it to put red beans in your mouth. <laughs> you know, and it's just like, what the, what the actual? And I was like, this is hilarious. <laughs> so I did it. I put red beans in my mouth. And it was like, just loads of random stuff. It was like, add tuna. Because I think it's taken, I don't know how it got tuna, but I think they mentioned Tao that it got translated to God knows what. And it was like, add tuna. So I just got a tin of tuna and I just put it on the table. And then it was like, now paint the base white. And it's like, okay. <laughs> you know, and it was like, paint the area black. And it didn't specify the area. So I painted my table black. You know, I like took it literally. Yeah. And I thought that was hilarious. And it did bad. Everyone who's seen it loved it, but it did really bad. And uh, it can be like really disheartening. Yeah. You're like, this is a goat idea. This is actually goat. This is going to be so good. Everyone's going to love this. And you put it out and like four people watch it. It's got three downvotes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's just part of the game, I think. It's like, I think once upon a time, I, I think I was saying that. In hindsight, it's part of the game. At the time, it's really tough. It's really difficult to like take take something that you're really passionate about, make something that you think's great, that's, that you think's hilarious. You li I was literally like streaming, crying while I'm editing it because I'm watching it again. I'm like, oh my god, I'm so stupid. Why do I do this? Yeah. And then it goes bad. It's, it's obviously going to hit you, but you do have to kind of like just like get back on the horse and keep going. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like it's always awful, but the worst thing you can do if you have a bad video is not do anything about it. The best thing you can do is just make another video. Yeah. Which is crap. 
It's very, it's very <laughs> like I think like two weeks ago, I just, I just like creatively, I was a bit spent. I was just like fed up. I was just like, I can't be bothered to do anything, you know. I've got all these ideas, but also I don't want to do them. None of them sound good. And I just took a week off and I just went, I'm just not, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to like chill this week. I'm not going to stream or anything like that. And that like made me feel really a lot better because I just like relaxed a little bit because obviously when you are on the YouTube game, it is constant. It what is topic constant. can I talk about tonight? What video can I make? What am I painting for this? What company am I working with this week? Who do I need to email back? And it's just like a constant like, guys, it's the hardest job in the world being a YouTuber, all right? We don't get to make our own hours. I mean, we do. We don't get to decide what we do every day. I mean, we do, but, <laughs> but like, it can be hard like because it's like a creative-based role a lot of the time. Yeah. You know, as I said, if you're just doing Warhammer content and you're making Warhammer videos where you're just like, I got a new thing and I painted it, you're probably fine. You just paint something else. Yeah, I think... But I if think, you're trying to be inventive, it's tough. I, I think, think for our core audience, whereby they're very engaged with the content, um, a lot of what we talk about, especially we talk about this quite a lot on sagas because a lot of people will bring in running channels, obviously. Mm. And they're, they're, a bit, um, they're a bit ambivalent to this. They don't sort of understand that you, you put this effort in and the video goes out and they'll watch it. They're your core audience. They're like, yeah, I watched it. Like, yeah. yeah. Which I'm very, and we're all very grateful for, obviously. Don't get me wrong, love it. Every single view is very important. Yeah, 100%. The problem is, as you've probably heard on this chat a few times, the green arrows. That's all I care about. Yeah. If I don't get fireworks on a video, and when, you, and when you put it out, I, I never see fireworks. <laughs> and when oh, yeah. you put it out, when you put it out on YouTube, you're putting it out into a literal sea of content. Yeah. Because YouTube doesn't go, Mikey's a, a, a Warhammer channel, Liam's a Warhammer channel, and so we'll just put it out amongst Warhammer people. YouTube goes, there's a video in the great sea of videos, yeah. and go and find your audience. Mm -hmm. um, and it, I find I can find I sort of stopped doing Talking Heads properly for a while. And I, I kind of had an itch recently to start bringing, start bringing them back again, pre-recorded Talking Heads videos, because mm -hmm. I enjoy, I like the content, I like making the content, but I find it becomes a bit of a grind that has a negative connotation to it. So after a while of putting these videos out and they're getting two, three... So, so when, I, when I do a live stream, um, and I'll, I have the stress of picking a topic and making a thumbnail, sure. that will normally, for my streams, at least be relevant for about 15 minutes before it's then not relevant because we're talking about something different. That's about as stressful as it gets. And after the fact, that video will do two to 3,000 views, sometimes more. When I do a Talking Heads, which is, uh, you have that same issue with the, the content topic, mm -hmm. but then you have to film the video, you have to edit it, you have to put it all together, you put that package out there, it does the same as a live stream. Like, yeah, you're almost like, what's the point? What's the fucking, why did I bother? Yeah, it's tough. But it's just like, I don't know how much people care about like the ins and outs of like being on YouTube and stuff like that, but it's like, it is one of those, as we've, we've had this conversation today already, but just to refresh everyone at home, live streaming is so hard to grow. Yep. And it's so hard to get new people into a live stream unless you've got like crazy things going on and you're just like, your viewers are just ramping up. Whereas videos are the best way to get new people onto the channel and maybe they'll click on the live stream. And that's kind of like what you're constantly trying to do. You're trying to get new people to see your content, but then that can be hard if you're making weird videos that don't do very well. Yeah. Because it's like the core audience saw it and I appreciate every single person who watches my video, you know. I would literally shake their hand and say thank you because obviously every single video, whether it makes a penny or it makes 50p or whatever, it is all help to me. So to, to like fund my dumb dumb ideas. <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> like eat, putting red beans in my mouth and spitting them everywhere, you know. Um, but the problem is, it's just like the, the, the YouTube brain teaches you that unless you're getting more viewers than last time, yep. unless you're getting more likes than last time, unless you're getting one second longer watch time, then I'm like, a failure. Five years ago, I was getting like five viewers and yep. I put a video to a hundred people and I was like, let's go baby. And there's a term for it. It's something about a treadmill. I can't remember what it's called. And it's like, essentially, the more you grow, the the more, sh not, not like short-sighted, but like you'll, you'll have a peak you'll grow up and you'll go, you're like, right, I'm getting these many views now. Yeah. And you started here and then you'll go on a downer and you'll end up here and you're like, that's so bad. Because you do remember this bit, yep. you know, but you forget that you're here and you were there, yep. even though you had a, a meteoric rise there. And again, there's a, like a term for it. And it's something about a treadmill, but it's just like, it's so hard to remember where you came from like six months ago compared to like, oh, last month I was doing really good and this month it's all gray because uh, my views are slightly down, my subs are slightly down. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> cool. Do you, find it, do you find it really mentally stressful or, or have you learned to sort of deal with it? 
I think, I think I've kind of, I think I mostly deal with it. Again, like as I said, like a couple of weeks ago, I just went, nah, I'm out. <laughs> I uh, like, by the I'm, way, total you know respect, <laughs> total respect to you for doing that. Yeah. I struggle to take a day off. Yeah. Like if, if, I, if it's a Monday, we came back from a wedding uh, um, up, up north, north the other, the other week. Yeah. And we came back on the Monday. We got home at, oh, Jesus, three, four o'clock in the afternoon earliest. Dropped all of our shit straight down to my parents, picked the kids up, picked the dog mm -hmm. up, straight back up, got some food sorted, got to about half an hour before stream time, an hour before stream time, and Luce and I were absolutely bollocked. We were so tired. And I really had to mentally fight with if it's okay to take a night off. Yeah. Because you're, you're not going to put out a good video. It's not going to be a good stream. It's, and I really struggled to take a night off. So to take a whole week off Yeah, is... I, I think I, I, it wasn't even a whole week, so I think I streamed the Monday. And then the Wednesday, I think I was having internet issues, but I think I blew it out of proportion. Sorry, chat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then, Embellished. <laughs> yeah, I just went, I just need a week off. And I just, I've never done that before unless I'm like away. You know, yeah, what I mean? yeah. I'm like, I'm literally, last year or the year before I went to Greece, I'm like away for a week and a bit. I'm like, I can't stream, I'm in Greece. You know, but other than that, I've never really done it. I've missed the odd stream because I'm doing something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm like, oh, I can't stream today because I'm preparing for a big shoot on whatever. Um, but yeah, I've never really done that, and I think that really helped. And I think that made me click of like, oh my god, I've been like constantly trying to be creative every single week. And I think I don't like to use the word. I was on the way to burnout, and I think just taking that week just like maybe like go, okay, it's okay to have a couple of days off to kind of just like refresh. Yes. If you like, if I'm out of ideas, it is like kind of like shit, right? If you force it, it will be shit. If it's, it should be a fart. You just force it, it's crap. <laughs> you know. Um, so I just. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like it's I just like just went let's take a minute let's play Armored Core 6 all week great time great game if you've played it super yeah. sick game you ever played it Armored Core? no alright it's by FromSoft who make Dark Souls and Elden Ring okay but you're a mech you're like a, in a giant suit of armour like a giant killing machine and it sounds like you're just fighting other robots but it's not so much deeper. I am. Um, it's philosophical. I, I haven't mean. played video games properly for a while. So I, we actually, I, Joe and I essentially launched a second channel. Yeah. And we made a video you game channel. You got the COD channel. Yeah, well, it was, the idea was this is a video game channel, but the only game we wanted to play at the time was, was Call of Duty. Yeah. Um, and actually, it was quite interesting because I think, I think the mind told me that it's going to be much easier because you just literally sit at the desk and you stream the games and you watch all these people that have got hundreds of thousands of subs mm -hmm. streaming mm -hmm. Call of Duty mm -hmm. and you're like, I mean, they just literally sit and play the game, right? Yeah. How hard can it be? So then you Whereas, forget there's a hundred thousand subs who also want to do that, who are also yeah, just sat right? and playing the so game. So you don't need a giant studio, you don't need a table, you don't need to paint armies and build models, and you don't need all this shit. Just you game. You literally have a key light, just a camera. Yeah, just, just, just sit play, and play video games. This would be fucking easy. Yeah, a thousand Jesus, viewers a week. That's a grind. Yeah. That's really yeah. fucking hard. <laughs> and then I, what, we, what happened was I took something that I loved, and it, and it ended up getting to a point where... I, just, I didn't want to play the game anymore. Mm. I was like, I'm sick of playing this fucking game and mm. I don't want to play any other games. I don't actually want to play games at all. How do you feel like, how do you feel, well, how, what do you think Ninja feels like, you know? He, all he does is play Fortnite. I know. You know he's so salty and so grumpy. Yeah. Like, and but, I was kind of getting there a little bit and I was like, I actually, it did actually give me a little bit of a newfound lease of life with, the, with this channel, with yeah. 40K, because I'm like, somehow in seven years I've not got there. I've got a bit grumpy and I've got a bit, there's a bit, a bit of vitriol towards DW for doing something dumb or the yeah. game for being in a bit of a bad state um, well, or whatever. Honest, someone else coming out of nowhere and getting thousands of views and you're like, terrible. <laughs> yeah, or thousands <laughs> you know? of subs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You've got the money, you just buy them, don't you? Yeah. Um, so, so there's things that have, that have happened, but on the whole, like this, the relationship with Warhammer hasn't really changed. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I got quite appreciative of it because I was like, I do find YouTube hard. I do find it stressful. Yeah. Uh, especially when you don't have those green arrows. And yeah. we're conditioned to... I got to a point where I was obsessive with the studio app. If you don't know, when you have a channel, you can download the YouTube studio app and then you open up your dashboard and it shows you your subs, your revenue, your yeah. views and your watch time, I think yeah. it is, watch hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it gives you arrows, green, dark, grey, down now, or yeah. like just like a dash. Dash, just... if, it's, if it's neutral. Yeah. yeah and you're like, I don't know what's worse, the down or the dash. <laughs> um, and when you open it up, if it's not all green, and, you, and when you down and refresh it, if the sub number doesn't change, you're going to be like, oh, it's a fucking bad day. I wish it didn't open with that because it's because the studio app's great for replying to comments because using the YouTube app to reply to comments is crap. Yes. But like to reply to comments and change titles and stuff, the studio app's great. But it does just show you 
And it's like, here's your sub number. Yeah. Guess what? It's down from last week. And it's like, oh, here's the total subs you've had in the last 30 days. Guess what? It's neutral. Enjoy. Yeah. And yeah I, deal I, with that all day. And then you scroll up for those four windows and it gives you the next three videos. And like, if it's one of them is an actual video, there's a little drop down that will tell you where it's ranked as well. Yeah. So, so again, when people say like one out of 10, essentially each video is compared to your last 10, whether it's shorts or, or normal content. And it'll rank it. So it's like, if you've got 100 views on this video, uh, in two hours, but your last video got 500 views, it's going to be like a five out of 10. Yeah. Because essentially it's just comparing to But then it puts a little comment ten. in there. It puts a little jellyfish thing. Like the, I put the Kyrgios saga up um, yeah. last Monday to members. It went live on Saturday. And I know that this happens because the members get it for five days and YouTube's app and analytics tool doesn't work out that it's been watched by loads of people. No. So it goes it's live. It's like it's going out fresh. Like fresh, right? But all the members aren't going to watch it because they've watched already it. seen it, right? Yeah. So uh, then it goes, it's like. So why not, did you bother? Then it goes. Why did you put it out? Then it goes you nine. Out, it goes nine out of ten. Fewer, fewer regulars than usual are choosing to watch this video. Yeah. Like thanks YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> why, did you, why did you bother getting up today? You know what I mean? Just stay in bed. <laughs> it's fucking you horrible know? sometimes. Yeah. So I like, find it. It's just stupid because it's like, for people who aren't doing it, they're like, "What are you talking about? Just yeah. Shut up and just get on with it." But it is like, the only time I feel anything is when I get fireworks, and that's one out of ten. Because that rewards you for it, you know? No it's, dopamine hits. Yes, Otherwise, it is. Otherwise, I'm just, a, I'm just a blob. You know, I don't feel anything. I'm just neutral to everything. <laughs> you know? I'm northern. Well, I don't see, care about anything. Part of the, the fireworks, Liam. Part of the whole saga series and talking to people in the community is I found that there was a real disconnect between... Um, this is a while ago. I found there's a real disconnect between sometimes between our audience and the creators mm -hmm. that existed, which is interesting in a Warhammer... Um, creation space because we're typically more engaged with our audience than some of the bigger creators. Like yeah. having one on one conversations with a YouTube creator in 40k space is significantly more likely than having a one on one conversation with a Mr. Beast, for example. Yeah, because right? you're so tiny. Exactly. You so, know. but there was still a disconnect where uh, there was a couple of times where I moaned about being tired or, or close to burnout. I don't love using the word. Sometimes yeah. I feel like I sit very close to that all the time. I don't feel like I've ever been properly burnt out, mm. um, apart from when I was working my last full-time job. A loose spot of that. That wasn't even me. Yeah. Um, and, I don't and think you realise you have burnt out. No. It's already, you've already and people, people are often like, what the fuck are you whinging about? You get to just play Warhammer. Videos, bro. You just get to play Warhammer for a yeah. job. And I'm like, okay. And I fully respect and appreciate that point of view as well for a person who has it's to go... It's the hardest job, Liam. <laughs> you know, it's the hardest job in the world for a person who has to go and do things like be a paramedic or whatever I'm like yeah fair enough yeah. I, I understand that's but then, nothing on being a YouTuber <laughs> <laughs> and that's why part of what I'm trying to explain to people is like it's actually it isn't I wouldn't say it's the hardest job I love it and I'm, I feel very blessed that we can do it every day mm -hmm. but there are stresses that come with it and it is a bit of a mental health mind fuck I think sometimes yeah. and that little dopamine hit of fireworks is exactly part of the problem it, the, for example this morning I opened up the app I don't know why I did. Oh, no. uh, it's one of the things I do when I'm in the gym now is I check on the app, it's part of the thing I do in the gym, because I, I reply to comments when I'm in the gym. So it's if it's easier. green, you just lift better. <laughs> <laughs> but basically... Is it I, green? I, I, hate, I hate inefficiency of time, right? So when I'm in the gym and it's resting between sets, and oh. I'm sat there doing fuck all, so what I do now is I, I save YouTube comments and I'll look and I'll reply to emails and YouTube comments yeah, whilst yeah. I'm in the gym. And, I, and I, you know, I found that that becomes a useful time. And I opened it up, and both the watch hours and the views are on down arrows, right? Oh, well. Subs are green. Subs are green. Revenue's okay. Sure. But those two are both down arrows. And I, and I instantly was like, oh. I, st I had to stop, yeah. and I was like, no, we've had a couple of really good weeks of content. Mm -hmm. Like, Joe and I have really enjoyed ourselves, and we've had a really couple of good weeks of content. Fuck those arrows. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Because it, you it, forget about it, don't you? Because it doesn't matter. Because yeah. we've had a real good time. But looking at those would lead you to believe that you've had a, a shit couple of weeks. It's been mm -hmm. really bad. Mm -hmm. So well, actually, it compares to the last twenty-eight days, but you know, and I was like, I, I and because of the, this is a little weird thing, because it compares to the last twenty-eight days. I have no idea what we did a month and a half ago that might have given us a spike, yeah. a random spike that yeah. for some reason happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my live view, my live viewer average is so down because I did an Age of Sigma live stream. Where I talk about faction packs. I had like five hundred viewers, which is like unheard of for me. I don't. I, I've had that like a few times because uh, I normally average like. Between anything between 50 and 150, right? Yeah, and I, I was like sat at 500 viewers talking about faction packs, like talking about indexes, and like everyone was like super hyped. But then after that, I had like 50 viewers on my next stream. I'm like, Ooh, when I you sit there, fell off. When, <laughs> when you sit there doing that stream and you look at the YouTube at, um, open window and it says uh -huh. 500, does, do you get a bit fluttery? Do you get a bit a like excited? Bit. I need to perform it. Yeah, I try. The thing is with it is it is it sounds so cliche to say, but I do try and avoid looking at it, I don't have it open all the time. I do have it like, I'm like, I start the stream 
and I have like the studio thing on OBS so I can see I'm live and stuff like that and make sure it's working. I try not to look at it because I do try and be the same whether I've got five viewers or 500. It's so hard though, if you notice the chat's going crazy, like, why is it going so crazy? Oh my God, I've got 500 viewers, what the? You know? <laughs> I'm like, whoa, baby, <laughs> yeah. eating good today. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's just like, it is, it is weird. And obviously the goal is to keep growing, keep getting more viewers or whatever, but it is just so sporadic. It can be so sporadic. It's like, because you are making content around Warhammer, what are Games Workshop doing? You know, what are they doing? Yeah. Are they are they keeping everyone happy? That makes you me know? nervous. Yeah, like if Games Workshop dies tomorrow, we're both fucked. <laughs> well, well I, I I'm can, more fucked than I you. I can yoink. You know what I mean? I can just twist it to something else. <laughs> yeah, I'm more fucked than you are because we yeah. literally only cover GW. Yeah, so it's like it's it's tough. You know, because you are because you're constantly being creative and you're constantly trying to come up with new ideas, but you're also in the pit of making Warhammer content, or at least, for the very least, tabletop content, yeah. you know? And that comes from, like, it's so weird because as I just mentioned, like, gaming streamers get locked into one game. Yep. We're also, we're kind of like suffering from the same thing. We get pigeonholed. Yep. You know, people still come in and be like, oh, why don't you make battle reports anymore? And I'm like, I haven't really made consistent battle reports for like four years. Yeah. You know what I mean? But people, people see me as like a battle report channel still, and I'm still pigeonholed as that. And like we're realistically pigeonholed for Warhammer. I sometimes break out and do some other stuff. You don't really. And that's the problem. It's kind of like you're, because you've built an audience from that, that's what people watch you for. And a lot of the audience, barring the core audience, which are the, the, the Gs, they're the ones who tune into anything, love them. Some people go, well, he makes Warhammer. Why is he talking about something else? I don't care about yeah. that. And you like really suffer with it unless you like persevere. But then it, but then it, it leaks into everything we just spoke about though, right? Because you release something that's not related to what you normally cover, yeah. all those arrows go down, yeah, yeah. it becomes a 10 out of 10, yeah, and you yeah. think, oh, this is a, this, I don't know why I bothered, this is a disaster. Yeah, because I have a second channel now called Hellstorm 3D, which is a 3D printing focused channel. Okay. Because um, some of the 3D printing videos on your channel have seen some massive my success. My most viewed video is 3D printing. Uh, is it? Yeah. Is it not a 60 second clip of Henry Cavill talking about Warhammer? Unless it's just overtaken, <laughs> they are the top two. <laughs> Look, I copied Balrog once and it worked, okay? <laughs> I got it to, I got to that clip first. He's posted it four times. I've only posted it once. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that that video basically paid for my studio. <laughs> <laughs> the other renovation is like I moved the month after. I was like, whoa, YouTube's good this month. Oh, it's Henry Cavill. Thanks, bro. Appreciate you. Um, but um, yeah, so like my most of videos or oh, lots of my most videos, of the top 10, let's say, yeah. I think probably five or six are all 3D printer related. Um, but because I'm a Warhammer channel, unless I'm making 3D printing content that is directly related to, to Warhammer, people aren't interested. Yeah. So I found that it's kind of like I'm pigeonholed in one way, but I'm trying to divert where I'm making like adjacent 3D printing content. So I'll, uh, currently in my format, I'm trying to do, but... Running two, one, running one channel is hard enough. No mind trying to do two. Yeah, um, I'm like, here's a video where I've made some like Warhammer stuff with a 3D printer. Also, I've reviewed the printer on this other channel. If you want to go watch, I'm trying to like. So you link it in. Yeah, I'm trying to like funnel together. But as you say, trying to make it Warhammer related all the time is so difficult because I'm yeah. trying to make Warhammer 3D printing videos. And there's only so many times you can say, please don't 3D print Games Workshop. Here's some other stuff. When people are like, bro, shut up. You're just gonna 3D print Warhammer. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I don't try and promote that. Everybody obviously does it. It's not something I like condone, but like, it's so hard to try and come up with an idea that is like Warhammer adjacent, but I'm 3D printing, but I'm not 3D printing Warhammer. And most channels with 3D printers are just doing that now. And again, I'm not. That's not my vibe. I make stuff that goes along with Warhammer, like on my Bone Reapers that I'm using in the stream later, which you've already seen on the on the show. They have like cool basin bits, which are all 3D printed. Yeah. And I'm going to be promoting those in a video soon. And that's like, cool, Warhammer adjacent, how, here's what you can use a printer for. But I found that I was really struggling with like loads of ideas of like, how many times can I review a 3D printer where I print stuff that isn't Warhammer to make it Warhammer related to, to post the same type of content? Like, here's a new machine, why do you want to buy it? So I've had to make like a separate channel and that's done like, it's actually done really, really well for like my second video got like 10,000 views or something, which I was thought was like pretty sick because my second video on my first channel got like three. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just like, you kind of like get pigeonholed and it's hard to break out of that niche, you know? But it's, you just got to like find a way. That's one way. But because Hellstorm also is now arguably more than just a YouTube channel though, right? 
uh, in what way? What Tournaments and events. Yeah. Events uh, is another thing that I think you... I would, I think it's, to my bow. I think it's fair to say it's something that you'd been, you've been known for. Yeah. Because um, yeah. I essentially, I started running tournaments like very early on as well. Yeah. So I was like, I want to meet people like, oh, you know, like, uh, I want to meet you and stuff like that. When I was like really small. And I was like, oh, I'm going to run a tournament. Do you want to come along and like do gaming days and stuff like that? And then that kind of exploded pre-pandemic of like running like huge events. I was running like 80 manners every other month or something like that. And um, yeah, I just feel like Hellstorm is me as much as I have loads of people helping me out and I love them all to bits. People, when people think of Hellstorm, they think of me, sadly. Yes. And I'd love it to be like, I've always said to my friends, I'm like, I just want to help to make you as famous as I am. That's the best I could do, you know? Um, and they're all amazing. They help me out with like loads of like running events and stuff like that. But yeah, like Hellstorm is kind of like an overall brand, I guess, yeah, yeah. of like me doing stuff, I guess. Yeah. And it's like, it's not just YouTube. So Hellstorm's it's... 3D printed store coming soon. Yeah. So like Hellstorm is me making Warhammer <laughs> content. I do 3D printing. I do tournaments yeah. and uh, and sometimes I play video games. Oh, you're amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. That's a good moment. I've lost my camera. You oh, another Kodak moment. Good, because I'm going to go to the toilet. Do you need a pee pee? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if we touch on the event side of things again for a brief moment, though. Yeah. So I, one of the first big events I ever went to was actually one of yours. Which yeah. I think was held at Sanctuary, where you are. Well, it's not the same building, though, right? Yeah, Sanctuary's moved before. since. Yeah, it was a big show. Still in the same town. Yeah. Uh, it's like down the road from there. But yeah, it was a big church, mm -hmm. and we had like, I think it was like 80 people, 70, 80, I think. It was, it was. Or big. I, 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 I one don't of the remember. reasons why it sticks in my mind is because it was, <clears throat> it was ITC format. Yeah. Which I'd never played before, mm -hmm. because this was before Games Workshop built their own tournament pack. We can talk a bit more about that in a moment mm -hmm. and the current state of Warhammer. The whole base. <laughs> um, uh, uh, so it was actual old school ITC format, which I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Yeah. Dan lent me his Ulthwaite army. Yes, I remember um, that. I didn't yeah. even bring an army up. No, he just then, fucking um, turned up, royalty. <coughs> yeah. Present me my army now, says. Bro Brom came... <laughs> Squires! Brom came having never been to a tournament before in his life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you yeah. paired him game one against Manny. <laughs> who had... Me? Yeah. No, the app. Who had broadside towel spam. Yeah. Yeah, whatever was good at the time. Yeah. Whatever was spammable at the time, but definitely. It was all the, like, out of his like, rocket stuff towel. Yeah. And Brom was like... Oh, did, he bring, did he bring Ultramarines or did he bring... Yeah, guns? he brought Ultramarines, I think. And he mm. came up and he was like, oh, I'm playing this guy, M Manny Chi. You Manny like, Chi. I was it. like... <laughs> Good luck, mate. <laughs> Look, you know, best way to learn into the fire. <laughs> but, uh, one of the reasons I remember that, if I if I remember correctly, one of the reasons I remember that event as well is because you you don't just sell an event ticket to play games of Warhammer, though, do you? Right, yours right. typically. Oh, I don't. I haven't. I'm, I'm going to confess something now, Mike, because okay. I'm terrible for this. I haven't read the, read the event pack for the one at the end oh, of August. God. But typically, yours include food as well. Yeah. So yeah, it's more than just a ticket. It's like there's a whole package that comes with buying yeah, a Hellstorm ticket. Yeah, because I run tournaments, <clears throat> but I like to call them events. Yeah. Because it, there's a tournament, but there's some shit happening. Okay, so yeah, you get food included. Yeah. That's something that we stopped doing and then started doing. There's a famous picture of me on Instagram because I used to get my food for Sanctuary from Costco. Mm -hmm. Costco Pizzas used to do a family bundle. They misheard my order and gave me four times as many garlic breads as I needed. And the garlic breads are 16 inches. Oh, wow. So there's me holding like... 25, 16 inch garlic breads, just like piles of them. Great time. Fucking love garlic bread. It's good. Yeah, it's bad for you, but it's great. <laughs> <laughs> garlic and bread. Sorry, I'm from, I'm from the North, I had to. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so like we just like, we hold a tournament, but we have fun stuff happening. So, like at the most recent big one that we held, which we're holding another one in August. Um, the Super All Stars, by the way. Liam, you're coming. I am coming. James yeah. coming again. It's a great hall event hosted by Hellstorm. Yeah, exactly. I don't know if you've heard that. <laughs> I have. <laughs> I have actually. <laughs> I can't remember the last name, but he came up to me at the last time it was at uh, Warhammer World, and he was like, "Did you know what Liam's doing?" I was like, <laughs> <laughs> "No." <laughs> it's like we're taking over, and I was like, "Right, okay. Oh yeah, yeah you're wearing a Liam shirt, fair enough." Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so we just do like do fun stuff. So we'll, we'll have like a live stream. We'll have a tournament. You get your food when you come. But we, we'll have like, we did like a birthday party because it was Nick's birthday, so we gave everyone cake, you know, just like as an example thing. We'll just give away free prizes all the time, just yeah. giving away stuff and random stuff and just making it an experience because I'm just trying to, my goal, I'm trying to raise the bar for Warhammer events in the UK because I feel like, not naming any names, not, I don't want to do that, not, but like, I feel like... I mean, I name names, but go on. 
I feel like the bar's quite low. It's kind of like turn up, play Warhammer, leave. You know? It's like, that's fine if that's all you want. But I, that's a tournament. I run a tournament where you're going to come and hang out. You know, you're going to make some friends. And if you don't, if you don't want to make friends, I'm going to make you make friends. Yeah. You know? Because like, I, th I feel like a lot of events I go to that like people like play their games and then just go home. They don't stay for the awards. They don't like hang about and clap for everybody. The typical Warhammer tournament experience <clears throat> is part of the reason why I haven't done a typical Warhammer tournament in the last two years. Yeah, it's very. I, I find that even though it's an event with hundreds of people, it's very isolating. It can be, yeah. Because it's just like you and your opponent, you're go and you're it, both gonna have a great time with each other. Yeah, well, however it, you like. It can be quite a grind as well. <laughs> yeah, but it's kind of like it does. It doesn't feel like very. I like to think an event is everyone getting together to play Warhammer, whereas I feel like sometimes tournaments can feel, I'm going to play five games. Yes. You know, very not community-led, which it sounds daft to say a lot. It sounds very cliche, I know. But it's like, I like to like it when people come to the event and they take a memory away that's not just the games they had. Yeah. Like, something, something funny happened. Mikey was doing something dumb. Elliot was doing something dumb. I got free cake. <laughs> Elliot was doing something dumb. Yeah, I mean, what, hey, he does. He's great. I love him to bits. So he turned up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's, he's amazing. I love that. I love that man to bits. Yeah. Officially my best friend. Yeah. I, had some, I made him do a quiz. Oh, okay. Yeah. For my 30th birthday. I'm 30, by the way. Yeah, are you? Yeah. So young. Very young, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I invited all my friends, most of the house dog team. Some of them couldn't make it. That's why I said that. I invited all my friends. A lot of the house dog team came, and I made them do a best friend quiz, and Elliot won. <laughs> really? It's officially <laughs> Very, very funny. Very, very funny. It's an interesting concept, though, because um, we're looking at, obviously, opening Hobby House here in the future, as our audience, our audience know, at least. Mm. And I think... I think what you're trying to do is something that monumentally appeals to me. Mm. A, an event over a tournament. They are different things. And yeah. I think I've experienced both. And I don't have problems with Warhammer tournaments, but um, we, used to, we used to attend um, the GTs at Factorum for yeah. a while. And one of, the, one of my favourite things about those GTs when, when I was playing in them would be that you turn up, you play your first three games on a Saturday, and everyone would, during the day, everyone's already going, where are we going for dinner? Yeah. Where are we all going to go Which for Which I think is lost a lot of the time. 100%. Obviously, as, as events get bigger, it's a lot harder. Yeah. And people are more likely to huddle. But, like, yeah, as it, that is that, that community thing of, like, where are we all going? You yeah. Know? Even if it's little pockets of people are where we're going, you know? Even yeah. if it's, like, you, what I would hope is if someone came to an event on their own, they would, by the end of the day, have a group of friends they can go out and have dinner with. Yeah, that'd be nice. That's, that's my goal as an event. You're going to come and have fun. But you're also going to make memories with people that aren't just just on the table. Yeah. Like making memories on the table is great. That's why you're there. But also, in addition to that, you should be making friends, having a good time, having laughs, having some beers or whatever, you know. Um, so that's what I'm trying to do. And, it, and that's like not only like the way I run events, it's the, the venues I run, it's the tables I use and stuff like that. It's just there's so much variety there. And I... I make it my mission, even if I've got 100 people in a room, I'm going to go and say hello to every single person at least once and say hi, and so they know who I am. If they see me on the telly or whatever, or they just know me because I run tournaments, I want to make sure that they have that, like, that minor, if minor, personal connection to me, so then I can have that like banter with them. You yeah, know? absolutely. Because there's some events where you go to, you turn up, you turn up to your table in the morning, you don't say hello to anyone, you turn up, you put your army out, you play a game, and then you leave at the end of the day. And it can get quite, like, especially with Warhammer 40k tournaments, um, it can be quite a tiring experience. Yeah. Like, it can be fatiguing because the games are hard. Mm -hmm. uh, at, at Long. The top, at the top level, the at the tournament level, the game is, yeah. is a challenge at, at best. I think at the moment, the game isn't in a great place. We'll talk about that in a moment. Um, so that's a stressful experience. It can be a stressful experience anyway. And I sometimes feel like, I've seen people that have turned up to a tournament, they've played three games on Saturday, they don't do very well, they go home and they don't turn up again the next day. Yeah. I'm like, what did you come for? Yeah. So clearly those individuals, and there's nothing wrong with this, but clearly those individuals came to win. Yeah. Because they didn't, and they didn't win, and they don't want to come back because I've got, I've got no chance of winning, I've got no chance of podium, and I'm not gonna, I'm not mm -hmm. gonna return. And some people, again, that's all they want to do. You know, that's that's yeah. they come to a tournament or an event, and they want to win games. And if they don't, they're not happy, and that is okay. But also, I think the better experience for everybody, the more an experience that everybody can have. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No matter your gaming skill. Can be coming and meeting people, having fun, I, and making I, friends. Joe and I had this conversation quite recently. I I don't care when I, when we come up at the end of August for the next Super. And I don't know if this will be out before then. Uh, where Crack are on. we? Crack mm, on. It might be out before then. Um, Mikey's running another event. In it. Cause is it can, can people subscribe to like a newsletter or something for y tournaments? Yeah. So so I've I've started a new newsletter recently. 
where basically if you come to one or you can subscribe by following it because I post them on Twitter and stuff like that. Yeah. You can subscribe to like news about Hellstorm. And yeah. it, it's not gonna be like it's not like a, a daily newsletter or anything like that. No, no. It's like sporadic. It's more about for events in the future because if, if I don't by the time this comes out, it'd probably be too short notice for most people to buy tickets. Nah, and buy one. And Tell the wife you're just going away for a weekend. Etc. You know, going out with the boys. Make it a new friend. <laughs> you know, let me get out. I don't play FIFA. But I, when, play Joe and I, when Joe and I were talking about going to this one at the end of August, we I said to him, I don't, I literally couldn't give a shit if I lose all five games. Mm -hmm. And I think that six, six games. Sorry. And I think that, like I said, I don't, really <laughs> don't want to scare you. So <laughs> so I, you haven't read the pack, so you don't know this. No. And yeah. I think that I think that I went through a phase, especially when I was um, spent a lot of time with with VT. I think I went through a phase of I need to go and win. Win games. Yeah, I need yeah, to be. Yeah, yeah. I need to be minimum three and two, if not four and one. And it gets. Quite, Don't get me wrong. I do the same thing. And you end up list tweaking and building and practicing. And I was like, why do I care? I play enough Warhammer that I can go and play competently. The rules mm -hmm. doesn't mean I'm going to be any good at the game, but mm -hmm. I can play competently. Sure. If I'm playing competently, my opponent shouldn't logically have a bad experience from a place perspective because he's not playing a person who doesn't know the rules. He's He's bending rules or cheat or cheating without cheating, you know, yeah, yeah. and intentionally doing things incorrectly. That won't be something that happens because I can play the, the game <clears> competently. So um, that I know that I know the game well enough to do that. So what do I really care about? What do I actually get if I win? I mean, there's a little bit of an acclaim that comes to if I it was to your event. And, Let's be honest, everyone loves winning a trophy. Of course they do, you know. But really, I I care more about the favorite game votes than I do about sure. the actual the actual trophy. That being said, I know you've got some significant prizes that come at your events as well. Mm -hmm. I've seen that at least. Mm -hmm. um, so I said to Joe, I couldn't give a shit if I turn up and lose all six games, as long as both me and my opponent for six games have a good time and laugh. Yeah. Like yeah. laugh at least once at something stupid. Exactly, come and make new friends, you know? Yeah. I think I'm probably gonna, I'm, I'm likely to bring world eaters because then you just deploy, move forward, there you go. Call it a day. Fight you that. I mean? Yeah, have a go. Awesome dice. <laughs> Combat's so much fun as well because it's so interactive. I yeah. love combat. I'm running pure Blood Angel jump pack at the minute, basically. The tanks really? are like the strongest that exists. I was running before the balance data site as well, won a couple of tournaments with it, got some trophies to prove it. I do love winning trophies. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, like there's like hardly any tanks. There's like a Bile Predator, 18 inch range max, uh, except for the Hunter Killer, and then an Impulsor. It's got some bolters on it. It's all combat. You so, you, so this is interesting because we've just talked about events versus tournaments and, and turning sure. up for an expense, uh, for an experience and going out with the lads <laughs> and stuff. But I would have always coined you personally as someone who is significantly more tournament focused or competitive focused than narrative focused. Yeah. Would you say that's fair, or would you argue that actually you're as much one of the other? Or one hundred percent, I'm more competitive, like focused. Yeah. I like, I love narrative video games, <laughs> and you know anime. And I, I, you know, don't get me wrong. I know a lot about the lore of Warhammer, but that is more probably because of my background of getting into Warhammer by playing Dawn of War. Yeah. So 2005, grinding on a wall, see some guys playing at my school, like, well, oh, you got some toys from the video game. And they're like, no, this is from, this is from the, the tabletop game. You're playing the video game from there. And then it all went spiral from there. So my main army is Blood Ravens. It's the biggest army I've got. It's the only army I play competitive, really. Um, so don't get me wrong. I, I love the lore of Warhammer, but the need, I'm so bad at concentrating reading books. I'm awful at reading novels. I just can't concentrate. I like I like read a novel and I like smash through one novel in a day, sometimes and I like I like read it back, cover to cover in a day, and then sometimes I'll read one I'll get like I'll do like a good four hour reading session I'll put it down and then I will forget, and then that's it. <laughs> Three weeks later I'm like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm halfway through that book and now I've got to start again. I'm just not bothered. Yeah. So like yeah, I personally struggle with the medium of um, it sounds daft to say, but like I'm just bad at concentrating reading books. So like. Taking in Warhammer law is pretty much exclusive to like videos like YouTube videos, and sometimes I'm just not in the mood for them. So like, yeah, I know the narrative. I like I like the background of Warhammer and like the idea of Warhammer as like guys in big power armor with big guns shooting each other is cool as fuck. But yeah, like the the game for me is kind of like I enjoy I enjoy the idea of Warhammer is like I'm running with these these guys that jump and they're flying through the air and they've got bolt guns and they're making cool noises. But also yeah, my main focus probably is like improving myself as a gamer and being yeah. better as like like as as weird as it sounds like building on my skill set as playing, you know. I like to be good at Warhammer. I'm not that good. I'm decent. I'm better probably probably 
big headed to say, but like probably better than most people um, who play. And I, and I like trying to do well. Even if I don't do well, I try to better myself. And that's yeah. what I like about Warhammer. I like building on that and trying to get I think I've come better. to realize I'm just a terrible player, but. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what it is because I don't know because I just because people are like, how do you get good? And I think that's so hard to teach people. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh yeah, focus on scoring points. You know, build a better list. Yeah. But like, I think a lot of it is just like weird f on the fly decisions, and a lot of it is just guesswork. I find, you know, well, I've drawn these two cards. I kind of knew they were coming because I've built a list for it type deal. So like, I think I think when it comes to competitive, I think list building is the hardest thing to learn. They're also the most important. You could have the worst army in the game, but if you play out your arse, you can win. Whereas if you've got the best army, you're going to have an easier time, but it's still like a big skill set that you need to learn and like understanding of how the game mechanics. But yeah, I enjoy the gaming aspect and I enjoy like challenging myself against against people who are better than me or harder armies. Because I only play Space Marines. I was actually looking last night on stream um, at a confrontation GT that we went to, the team oh, event, Jesus. do you remember? Because yeah, yeah. I remembered something, I was looking for something and I couldn't find it. But I remember, I was like, oh my God, there's my three repulsors with Gullinan. Yes. And I was like, I'm still playing Space Marines competitively. And that was like six years ago. It was. And then you were playing probably one of Dan Zelda armies again. No. Um, <laughs> I can't remember what you were playing. I was playing, um, we had <laughs> stupid armies. Yeah. So yeah. you took three repulsors and Gully Moon. Yeah. I took three guard super heavies. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. And then Brom was... took knights. And yeah. then Dan took Drakari. I think so, yeah. That yeah. sounds right. But um, yeah, I've just like... Space Breeze have been good for a little bit in 10th. They were really good in 8th. They were pretty good in 9th for a lot of it. I've always played the same army, and I enjoy like chiseling that one book for as long as possible. And I don't really play anything else competitively. I play on the channel loads of different armies, which I feel like... Teaches I think, you a lot about the game. I, but I think you, I, I'd be, I'm going to blow some slight smoke up your ass for a brief moment. And I think somehow you, you have a really like, fucking, I don't know why I knew you were going to pick that camera up. You have a really good understanding of the game mechanics, though. Yeah. Because, I mean, um, that's obviously, you can take that from, or you can understand that from the, uh, I'm sure, incredibly popular at Lenton Road. Uh, here's how I've broke Warhammer Next videos that you do, <laughs> right? Yeah. I ain't done one of those in a while. To be it has, fair. It's been a while. Yeah, but Let, let's be honest. They released a bad product, okay? I, I'm, they I'm, fixed it. I love them for I'm it. I'm going to be straight up and, and say, for me personally, there's one of those almost instant clicks when you put those out. Mm -hmm. For me, I like, you know, I, I take the... They're we, super popular, yeah. On the channel, we, Joe and I take the piss out of Hellstorm a lot, right? Yeah. And it, uh, I'll be straight up. I've said, this, I've said this on stream. I had to come out and say this on stream at one point because I, I feel like people thought there was real... Like actual problems going on. I was Bro, like, when it's behind my back, I think there's a real problem. <laughs> I, I was like, and I, and I, I was like, if I'm in chat but ripping on you, it's fine. But when I, sometimes I was a bit like, oof. I, 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 I said, there's like, you have to realize I fucking love this human being. I think mm. he's one of the greatest people in the game, uh, in the in the community, in the hobby community, and it comes from a place of love. If I thought he was worried or upset about it, and he mentioned it, I'd stop it immediately. Yeah, I'd be like, oh, okay, right, okay. Um, and I've said a few times, there's a, there's a couple of times where I've done a stream based on a video that you've put out, and I've been like, I'm not showing you the video, go and watch it. Mm. You should go and watch Just it. Just react to it, I don't care. Um, Just watch it anyway. Yeah, but the, um, but the well, I mean, I don't, I didn't want to do that because it's your content. I'd rather go and give you the view, right? Yeah, but if you watch it, they're more likely to go and be like, oh, Possibly, that's really good yeah. But I, it's all I, selfish. When I see the, <laughs> when I, see the uh, I broke such and such, I'm like, because I, I don't understand the game like you understand the game. Mm. And so, and I'll, I'll be straight up and say that. Uh, I understand the game, again, well enough to play co uh, competently, but not to the level or degree. So I'm like, I'll see an update come out for a roll, I'm like, yeah, that seems fine. And then a and video then I'll will come make out. A video about yeah. it and like, Pivot oh, has changed God. again. I'm like, click. Yeah. <laughs> I'm watching this. And I'll sit there and watch it, I'm like, huh. Yeah, I, I don't know what it is. I, I mean, the launch of 10th edition was really weird because we can all look back now and go, what Games Watch put out was really good in intention. Yep. But what they wrote down was step very different. And uh, I made that initial video where I was like, huh, that doesn't quite that doesn't quite make sense. And this is the terrain. Shoot, shooting through terrain. Yep. Because everybody See, I saw. Yeah, because everybody was uh, the kitchen the kitchen roll, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's why I asked for it, it's there. <laughs> I asked for it earlier, I wanted it back. But like I was like, that's a really interesting concept. And the concept was if if you haven't seen the video, it's very out of date now because it's pretty common knowledge yeah but it's essentially like because they'd wrote terrain with footprints if you were half in it you couldn't see through and no one understood that and everyone at the time said i was wrong and they're like what are you on about you're so stupid 
And I was like, no, this is this is how it works. And then people are like, oh my god, that's how it works. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's yeah. crazy, you know? Like, and it was like because it was such a foreign concept because we'd been so used to you can't shoot through windows, where this was like similar but drastically different. Yeah. And then it just kept happening. And again, they'd obviously like wrote it and they'd like read it once, and then some dicker do like all he does is just weaponize reading just reading and just trying to find i'm literally when i get a new book or a new rule or whatever i'm trying to find it now and that it's got to that point because it's i'm not trying to like crap on the product but at the same time i think there's a level of respect as a consumer where you should expect if something's going to come out it should be up to a significant right. level you know and it's just like if it doesn't quite work i'm not i'm doing it because it's funny one because people laugh and they go oh I, and i'm also educating because i'm not saying with a pivoting rule which is more more recent right raiders because of the way that they can pivot for free as per the rules right now they can make shorter charges than you should expect that's an example if you don't understand please watch a video because i put it on reddit the other day and i linked the video and 500 comments are like what about what do you mean i like just please watch the video please um but obviously that's not intended and I would never do it. No, of know? course. But I like telling people about it because but, I feel like it's very interesting. But also, I think it's very, you should know about it. You shouldn't abuse it. You should just know. I think it's important to know because I, I, I absolutely don't think when these broken things come into play, I absolutely don't think that you're the type of individual that we utilise them at the tournament. The problem is, there are unfortunately individuals out there that would utilise yeah. it or try to at least. Yeah. And I would hope you either watch my video because it's entertaining. Or you watch this video and go, that's really weird. I can have that conversation with my opponent so it doesn't come up in turn three and I have to have an argument, whether it's a tournament or a, a random pickup game that you've had, you know? Yeah. They go, oh, actually, because they're, there are those people out there, let's be honest, you know? They're like, well, I'm losing, so I need everything I can get. So I'm yep. going to do this really weird thing that you've never seen that I can catch you out of. And they can go, actually, that's not really good. We probably shouldn't do that because you've got this really particular unit that really benefits from it. Can we avoid that? Yeah. You have that conversation up front. Broken game mechanics, I, I TO'd a lot in the past, and broken game mechanics are so frustrating with people. And you, you know, one of them I remember distinctly in the last edition was the Elder Weapons platform with the two crew members. Yeah. And the crew members didn't count as being part of the model, but people were using them to move block people from charging it. Yeah. That's what. Because they'd be up against the wall, and, and got, you'd have yeah. the thing behind it. And so I, got you can't called, charge. I got called to a table, and I was like, well, I, I can't charge them. I was like, yeah, you can. And he's like, no, as the rules is written, and the guy started arguing, he was like, look, there is no way that this is the intent from the design yeah. team. Yeah. That this, the, you essentially have made a unit flat unchargeable. Mm -hmm. There's no way. So either you remove those two models from the table and the guy just uses the gun platform, or you leave the models on the table when that counts as part of the model's footprint. I don't care which one you choose. And he went, well, that's not what the rules are written. I was like, yeah, but that's what I'm ruling now. As a yeah. Uh, and so I think actually sometimes watching these these types of videos, and not that I'm encouraging everyone to go and subscribe to Mike, but you probably should anyway. Watch these types You're of videos. You're an hour in, lads. Come on now. Watch, watch these types <laughs> of videos so you have an awareness in the future, yeah. even if it means that you can go, whoa, whoa, before that happens. <laughs> exactly. And that, that's what I'm trying to do because, again, people, I think there's like a really weird mix of people in comment sections, right? The people that leave comments. And the people that don't leave comments are very different people. Yeah. And a lot of people are like, well, I can't believe you said this now, and now everyone's going to use it. And I'm like... I mean, people well, are finding that anyway. I didn't write it down. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just chatting about it. So, do, so interestingly, do you find these problems, or do you see them talked about in other places and go, I'm going to make a video about that? Bit of both. Oh, is I'll it? Honest, yeah. I don't find everything exclusively. You know, I don't, I don't think... I'm, I can't, like, sit here and blow my own smoke and be like, I find everything, I tell everybody about it, but... No, I'm on. I'm in competitive groups. I'm on Reddit. I'm on, you know, I'm on Twitter or whatever. And I and I sometimes I like pick something up and I'll read it. And I'll be like, that's really strange. Like I think an example of that was probably the Tau Codex, where yeah. the the one of the detachments lets you advance and then you gain assault when you slip to shoot, but you couldn't be slipped to shoot because you couldn't advance. I spotted that, um, but then other people also spotted it. You know, so it's like it's I'm not like the only person who's pointing them out. Yeah. But like, yeah, I either find stuff because it's come out early or like an email's come out, like this recent pivoting thing is like Tacoma open event exclusive, but I feel like it should be a call rule. That's why I made yeah. a video about it, right? I obviously didn't find that. I kind of knew it was a thing, but it's not like I was like, yeah, Games Workshop need to change it. Yeah. You know, and the other people were saying, oh, that's why they've changed it. And I just made a video about it. So 10th edition is a game. <clears throat> yes. Good product <laughs> or bad product? Now or overall? Let's, let's start with overall. Overall, I think it's had a really rough 
really rough upbringing. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think I think now it's a good game. Yes, I agree. And I think the armies are relatively well balanced. Um, I think they're like they're, there's no real outliers. I don't think there's a couple of armies that are on top. There's a couple of armies that are on bottom, but it's not like. <laughs> Sup the Kool Aid, you know. It's not like it was in ninth edition when we had Harlequins and Custodies. It's nowhere I, in that level. I'd go as far as to say, uh, I, I mostly agree. I think tenth now uh, is a well balanced game. Yeah. Comparatively, a good game. It depends. The problem I have and the complaints that I throw out there all the time on content myself, and I'd be interested to hear your views on mm. this, is that the design language used during the promotional period on Warcom seems to be incredibly different to the product that was actually released. Yeah. We were told uh, less complicated, less rules, less books, less less re-rolls, mm. less lethality. The less re-rolls comment and then instantly showing off Oath a moment that was before re-roll hit and wound was hilarious. And it always will be. <laughs> you know? It's genius. It was the same article. <laughs> or the day after. It was hilarious. I think the launch of 10th, like I will never critique Games Workshop models because they are they are the best. But I think the rules at launch of 10 was really bad. Mm -hmm. And I think, I don't know what happened. And I d there's loads of things you can speculate. I think they just cocked up a little bit, you know. They wrote something that they thought was cool. And, um, and ultimately, the intention, you can see it was cool, you know. But the way they wrote it, the way it came out, it was just really bad, you know. You look at things like Terrain, Eldar, you know, just like two prime examples of just like, what what were you thinking? Yeah. And I don't think they were like, oh my God, this is going to be really good. I think it was an accident. And I feel like the first couple of months were just kind of like whack-a-mole. Like, how can we quickly fix this? Yeah. And now over the last six months, not to blow smoke up his ass, ever since they hired Josh, um, but like they've really like grabbed the ball by the horns and really started to deal with it properly. And I think, I think only now the trajectory is going to be good I, I'm really deep into Warhammer. This could all be, as I said, Kool-Aid. I watched a great video by Magic Carp Use Fly last night. Yep. Um, obviously, he used to run Jack Dice Check. He put out a 40-minute presentation on why he hates 40K. And it was really fascinating. And he was like, he was comparing everyone to be like on heroin and everyone's just trying to get you to take another hit. And that's why he loved Warhammer. And everyone's just like, yeah, go on, take another one. It's fine. Just keep going. Uh, and it's a really fascinating video, actually, just because he's like fully out of it now. Yeah. And uh, his comparison to like he's a big League of Legends player, and then he like moved into Warhammer, and he's gone actually now, nah, mate, I'm back to League of Legends type deal. Um, so I think a lot of what he was saying, he was talking about eighth and ninth edition mostly because he didn't really get into tenth. Was just saying like the spread out of publications is really weird. Uh, the communication is really weird. The updates are really sporadic, but also like can really invalidate a lot of things which people find annoying. And a lot of his complaints were very valid. Again, like just, I bought an, a unit because it was really good. By the time I've invested to buy it, build it, paint it, it's already been nerfed. And not nerfed to a point where it's okay, to a nerf to a point where it's like just unusable. Um, and I think they've had a lot of problems with that, but I do feel like now it's, it is a little bit different, again, compared to this video that he put out. But um, I do think now they've kind of like, it feels like they've got the right idea, but they're also dealing with it in the right way. Whereas I think they've always had the right idea, but I don't think they've known how to deal with it. I've always said this, I, d I never think that their intention is bad. It doesn't oh, make God, sense. No. It doesn't make sense that their intention is bad. And, and, and They want to make money, right? They well, don't want to make a bad product. They don't want to make weird stuff. The problem is a lot of people would obviously normally lock that I want to make money with bad intentions. And that yeah. is, I don't give a flying fuck what I sell you as long as you buy it. Mm. And, I, and the thing is, I think that, with some of the products, that's fine. Yeah, that and, and that, but as a concept for a business, will work for a while. Yeah. I don't care what we're selling as long as we fucking sell it. We'll work for a while, but eventually that business won't survive. And the people at the top of GW, in terms of their management structure and their business structure, are wiser than to just look short term and yeah. I don't give a shit. So I think they do care, and I know a fair few people at um, Warhammer World who are part of the 40k studio. I know some people part of the AOS studios. Mm. They all really fucking care about the game. They all yeah. want to make a good product. They do want to make a good product. Yeah, and I yeah, think yeah. sometimes they don't quite hit hit the nail on the head. The 40k studio, I think, for the last... You're right, actually. It's got better over the last six months. But for a while, the 40k studios had a bit of a rocky road. Yeah, definitely. And I'm, I'm really hoping that this new hire, this new person they brought in to lead the studio... Uh, Josh, I think, is... So Josh is the competitor, the lead competitor. No, they're not, not Josh. They've got another guy. There's another guy they bought in who's yeah, yeah. leading the studio now, yeah, yeah. 
who they said is the essentially the carbon copy of the guy who's leading the AOS studio. Yeah. If that's true. I don't know how much of his background's public, no. but yeah. If that's he seems like, in terms of game design as a concept, seems like to know what he's all about. Yeah, that makes me hopeful. Mm -hmm. So I, at the moment, I'm like, because I, I said to Joe, I've said this, I don't know if I've said this on air actually. Um, Now's the time. So this will be the first time I might have said this live, but I think if it wasn't for the channel, I could have put 40k in a cupboard. Yeah. And stop playing it. Mostly because AOS 4 is so good. AOS is great. Currently. Yeah. Currently. We're in honeymoon period. Cool, Ed. We're supping hard. <laughs> right. You know we're in we get our little sippy right cups. Now. Yeah. <laughs> Joe, and I are in, Joe and I are in full honeymoon period of AOS 4 right now. And if it wasn't for the channel, I think I could have put 40k in a cupboard a couple of months ago, waited for AOS 4 and just played that instead. Yeah. Because of the channel, I've had to keep up with 40k. And I'm kind of glad I have because I'm still having fun. But I think the biggest reason why I'm having fun at the moment, and one of the things that makes me nervous about the, the All Stars event, is the reason why I'm having fun is the people I get to play with. Yeah. <clears throat> so week in, week out, I get to play with Joe and people like that. And we all, we all have a similar approach to the hobby, mm -hmm. a similar approach to gaming. So I don't know what this is going to be like at your event. Thing is, I don't let people be nobeds. As I said, I talk to them all. If I detect anything, I'm on the back. I'm like, come on now, tell me a joke. Oh, I'm in trouble. You <laughs> tell are, me yeah. a joke. <laughs> oh. Tell me a joke right now. Yeah. Or you're minus 10 points. <laughs> no, no, I think, yeah, like in regards to that, I think community aspect is an important part to keep yeah. people on the same on the same level playing field in terms yeah. of like uh, energy, you know, vibes. Um, but yeah, I think, I think 40K had a very, 10th edition had a, 9th edition wasn't great. It got really good right at the end. Yeah. End of 9th edition. Fantastic. Peak game. And then they launched 10th with the intention of making it better. And it was awful. Yeah. <laughs> the concept was cool. Actions, not actions, was really strange. Why did they just keep actions? You yeah, know I, I mean? know. I and then they hate... brought them back, which is fine. But, like, they didn't need to change that. And it felt like a lot of things they changed, they changed on purpose or just for the sake of it. Yeah. To make it seem new. It seemed like we had three years of refining an addition to a point where it was good for them to go, right, cool, we got there now, done. Yeah. Start again. <laughs> yeah, where they could have... And I said to everybody, and it's like something that I think when I say, say it to people, I'm like, oh, oh my God. Like, what's the best thing? In your opinion, what's the best thing about 10th edition? Like, maybe your, your answer's different now, but what in, what, in your opinion, what's the best thing? I don't know. Would you say the missions? The cards are cool? They're better than they were. Yeah. And then other people were like saying, oh, the missions are really cool. And they like this building. They like that it's a bit simplified. Some people don't, but some people did. And I was always like, at the start of the edition, I was like, okay, you could have played ninth edition with these mission cards and the list building aspects. Would have still been the same. You would have still had a great time. Because yeah. what was cool, oh, indexers. People loved indexers. That was the other big one. They could have released indexers. They could have uh, released the mission pack and they could have released the, the way they do list, lists, but the core rules could have been exactly the same yeah, yeah, or at least super similar. So I think when people look back and they think 10th was amazing at the time or they really liked it and now they don't, they don't like it, they all hate it. But like at the beginning, everyone was like 10th is so cool. I really love the missions. I really love the, the indexes. And then like you could have done that with 9th edition core rules because 10th edition core rules were inherently broken on launch. Yeah. They, I, they... think, I think a lot of people like Again, for like drinking the Kool-Aid, they're just, they're just like, they're getting bombarded with all these new cool things. They just see it as like, everything's really cool. I think, I think there's valid criticism at the time. I think, I think the I other think thing I'm, as well is though, is, is uh, and it's, it's their constant, incessant ability to be able to release a product in general, any kind of product, codex, whatever, that is invalidated within two weeks of purchase or within, yeah. and, and that, I feel like- That's a whole conversation about physical rules, Which we, right? won't, we, won't, we won't dive into that it's now. Been, it's been done to death. We all want digital rules. Yeah, rest, it's just, you know, it, you know and we spoke about this quite extensively on the channel in general. I think there's reasons where people are very, become very disenfranchised and I mm -hmm. understand it. Yeah. When you spend good money on a product that it's is then invalidated. And, and people, a lot of people have said, I've had the response from people saying, well, anyone who buys a codex is an idiot. I'm like, well, you, how do you get hold of the digital rules and you, in your app? You have to buy the codex. Yeah. There's there's lots of practices there which, I, do, which sell I don't codes, like. Sell code separately, make exactly. it cheaper, so you don't need to buy the codex. Or sadly, at start of the first problem and write yeah. write a codex that doesn't need updating in two weeks. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's ult ultimately if they want to keep selling codexes, do a better job the, in the first place. And it's harsh to say, but it's because true. I love them. And I love everything they make, and I am so deep into Warhammer and Games Workshop, and I do think they're best intentions at heart. But if they just wrote a better codex that didn't need updating two weeks later, people yeah. would stop complaining about buying codexes. 100%. Different processes needed, eh? 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> anyway, play testers are just like just another five minutes. I am conscious that you were like, I don't want to talk about myself for longer than like forty minutes, right? It's an hour and a half now. This is it. I've got to go, mate. I'm, I'm out. So you you did say that an, an hour and a half, you're just going to be done and you're off. Yeah, and we had a we had a pee break, so there's going to be ten minutes we off. We did have an a hour pee break. twenty. This video, you're actually, welcome. Might, might actually do, might do another pee. Well, we've got the Thames questions. We've got loads to go. Oh God. Okay. So I might actually do another pee break before. The, hang on. Oh. Uh, there's a fair few, to be fair. There's some nice ones. There's, yes. <laughs> yeah. Go on, what's yeah. the best one you've seen that you laughed at? No, I don't look at them. Don't this look is the at first them. time I've looked at them, right? Like, what, what, what did you laugh at? What, so what we're gonna, it? we're gonna, we're, I'll, I'm gonna have Was a, it Why My Studio's Crap? I'm gonna have, <laughs> I'm gonna have another bathroom break Because this is big and stinky. Look at it, it's got wood everywhere. It I'm gonna have another bathroom break now. I've been drinking far too much water. I was in the gym this morning, um, just so I could look oh, nice right. and impressive for you, basically. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I before, I, before we have a bathroom like break, we're gonna, after the bathroom break, we're going to jump into the Thanes questions. Again, like we say every single one we do, you never know there's a bathroom break because I'll edit it out. Uh, but we'll jump into the Thanes <laughs> but questions. But you keep right? saying there's a bathroom break, so they know there's a bathroom break. Yeah. Um, so after the break, <laughs> it's not going to exist. I want we'll, an intermission advert, by we'll the way. Do that, we if could there is do a that. I don't care. Add, uh, we could do, uh, <laughs> we do Thanes questions. Now we have a, a bunch of membership tiers, and if you join at Thanes Tour or above, you get to access to the Thanes WhatsApp community. And one of the things that they get to do is whenever we have a guest in here in the studio, they get to ask them any questions they want. We call it Thanes Unfiltered. They can ask anything they want, anything. But there's a challenge for you as well here, right? Okay. Because we've done an hour and a half, and I always wanted to keep these between 90 minutes and two hours in total. Okay, 30 minutes. And so half an hour. I always say to everybody, quick fire questions, okay. quick answers. I and know. every single person so far, Peachy Kirioth will go into a 20 minute answer on one mm -hmm. question. I'm mm -hmm. like, great, cool. But before I go to the break, what okay. you can do now is you can tell I'm gonna, everybody. I'm going to blind you, and then you can't read any more of the questions. What you can tell everybody on. You can tell everybody on. <laughs> it's it's so, so bright. It's ones. so bright. Um, you can turn to people now and tell. Uh, you can tell everyone in the audience who's watching, all 20 people, why they should come and join or subscribe to Hellstorm Wargaming. Gaming. Fine. So you should subscribe to Hellstorm because I'm a knobhead. <laughs> And uh, you want to cre want to fund and help with my creative endeavours, which are usually laughing. Uh, so, <laughs> if you like a nor northern humour, if you like YouTube with northern humour, if you like YouTube with Warhammer stuff, I make content with Warhammer in it, and sometimes it's related to what I'm actually doing. I can't sell myself. There's a shit sales pitch. Man. That was it. Yeah. <laughs> it was terrible. Subscribe. Because you want me to eat, don't you? That's what your chat says. Right. Okay. So we've hit the part of the show now, which is towards the end, right? Thane if you're questions. one of the Thanes, thank you so much for chucking a question in here. We do this all the time. Uh, I say, right, Thanes, tomorrow is another guest in the Great Hall. We welcome Mikey from Hellstorm Wargame into the Saga series. Questions below, and then they get to ask whatever they want, right? Yeah. It's just any question. Okay. Uh, like I said to you already, I, the aim is for these to be more quick, quick fire. Quick fire, come on, start. Right, go, you ready? Go, so thank go. you, Joseph. He says, Mikey, how do you feel about yes. being welcomed into the best community on the internet for an interview? It's good. <laughs> <laughs> that was really quick fire. <laughs> that was really fucking quick fire. I didn't even listen to half the question. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> no it's cool. I'm, uh, I'm happy to be here. I, I'm so glad you're We can do, I've said this to the John The best community well. is my community. We should have a fight. Well, I'll uh, come, I can come to your channel. Yeah, like we should like, like Ron Bergen do that shit. You know what I mean? Like your community turns up, my community turns up. Scrap. We oh, just watch. I'm into it. Yeah. We film it. We can commentate on it. Yeah. Yeah, we live stream it. <laughs> Turtle Beach headsets. Call it a day. So I'll come up to your gaff once. We, yeah, but some of this John. John wants to come down and uh, Kirioth wants to come and do another one. And I was like, yeah. come and do another one. It's fucking great. I, I'm I'm well. I'm hoping I'm hoping people enjoy it enough to want to come down again. No, don't drag this answer out. Jesus. And it's um, <laughs> it's all expenses paid for, isn't it? Right. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Carl. What's it like being around people that are positive for positive sake and not trying to break the rules for a laugh? Uh, don't know, mate. It's a bit cringe, to be honest. I don't know what you're talking about. Joe and I aren't positive for positive sake. I know! <laughs> this stuff I listen to you two talk about. So you don't get one of these sometimes. Uh, we do. We yeah. do. From GW, directly. Yeah. It's fun. I, I mean, breaking the rules is funny. That's why I do it. I'm not doing it to show you how to do something so you can like piss your friends off, unless you want to. Yeah. Uh, hopefully you're laughing with me and then learn something along But also, like you say, right? Write good rules in the first place. You can't break them. It's, just, it's harsh to say it out loud. Thanks, right, Carl. Alan says, around. you're put in charge of Games Workshop. No. And you can change three things only. What do you change and why? Uh, that's, that's a really hard question. It's really hard, yeah. Because I love criticising them because it's fun. I'm yeah. sure I, don't know, I wouldn't be able to do it myself. I'd do a terrible job. Three things I'd change. Uh, I would, I think I spoke about this on stream as well, live in Monday, Wednesday, Friday. <laughs> um, I would change the release cycle of editions. Okay. Okay. This is a big Longer? one. Longer? Longer. Yep. 
So Codex has released the same rate, um, but the edition lasts a bit longer. Okay. Maybe do two campaigns at the end of edition, because we know what the, the order is. New edition, Codexes, campaign, new edition. Yep. That's the, the order. So new edition, Codexes, campaign, within three years, or let's say two and a half, and then like have a year and a half of like a grace period where they're still balancing. Maybe they do another campaign uh, if they want to or whatever, or even extend the campaign out a bit longer. But I think they should have a longer grace period of everyone having a codex because what they did to Guard and World Eaters is not fun. Okay. Mm, yeah. It's not. It's not good. Joe loves Guard. I love World Eaters. We were touching our bad places there. Yeah. So that isn't cool. And also, the mission packs, six months is too short, 12 months is too long. Why can't they have nine-month seasons? Yeah. There's two things that change. Yeah. For both games, Age of Sigma and 40k. Third one, uh, pay me as a playtester, because the, I would have no content, but I'd ask for £500 an hour. <laughs> an hour? <laughs> Fucking Jesus Christ. Uh, I mean, Yeah, okay. but, but think about it. Think about it. If every codex was, was broken before it went to publish, having um, fixed. Having been a playtester... Priceless. <laughs> Having been a playtester, if they asked me to playtest again, I'd say no. Yeah, fair. It's a they. I I can't give away too much. There's no, of a, they ask you to do it. They ask for a lot of work. Yeah, for very Maybe not little return. Four fifty. Yeah, but they ask you to do a lot of work for very little return. However, I had mentioned in the past to them about you being playtester. Genuinely. Yeah, but they don't like me because they they think, don't like you. They think I'm being horrible. They don't like you. They should just laugh at. Do me. they really not like you though? I don't know, but I imagine. I don't know. I'm not sure. I would get the impression. They, keep, they still send you loads of stuff, don't they? I mean, they still yeah. send you everything. Pretty much, yeah. I don't know. They don't like you. He seems... I don't, I don't think they're always happy with me. <laughs> That's fair. I'm the most youtuber -y Warhammer YouTuber they have to deal with. Agree. It's a quote. Strong agree. Quote. <laughs> oh, it's a quote. Oh, okay, right. Quote, end quote. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought that was a you quote. No, no, no. no, 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 no actual no, no, quote. No, okay, quote, right. Quote. Quote. Mm. So uh, thanks, Brett. What would you do at your tournaments if the Great Hall didn't come raiding? Context, right? We bumped into you at, um, at UK Games Expo, and I asked you about the tournament and the ticket sales, and you said they weren't doing very well. Yeah. So I had a chat with Joe, and said, do you fancy going? And he said, yes. So we bought tickets immediately. We did. And I was live on stream on the Friday night. We just got home from UK Games Expo, and I was talking about this. And I, and I came up with an idea, because someone asked me, when's the next Great Hall event? And I was like, I don't know. And I was like, <gasps> Mikey says... Well, I'm going to the event, I was so like, I'll just take over. Mikey said he's only sold like 50 tickets out of 150 available. So if you yeah. all buy tickets now, so there's like two-thirds Great Hall people, we'll just call it a Great Hall event hosted by Hostel Wargaming. Well, little, little banner in the corner. You can go and get there, you know. <laughs> uh, what would I do? I'd probably be going bankrupt in about a month. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you for buying tickets if you come in. And if wow. you haven't, well, you probably haven't seen this video, but... Thanks for coming, appreciate it. I, I mean, I, if, if I have a good experience, which I'm sure I probably will, I'm going to try and get to you one You mean one, two, four? I'm not letting you in army this time. No, I'm bringing well, my own this time. Yeah. But I'm doing, I, very I think, brave, Liam. I think I'm going to try and get to one... Uh, look, straight up now, all joking aside, I think I'm going to try and get to one a year, um, because I said to Joe, I want to do more events, mm. and I want to avoid the events where I feel like it is a slog, and it is tiring, and I don't enjoy myself. Event, not tournament. Exactly. I'd rather go to events. And um, we don't do a lot in the north for our community because of where I'm based. So if if so, our lot, so south. if our lot <laughs> want to come to one of your tournaments and help sell it out once a year, we all get together. It's part of the event experience, yeah, right? Yeah, I'm looking forward to meeting everyone. Helps you out as well. well. You can so. subscribe to me. Oh, hang on. I pressed the wrong button there. Thank you so much, Brett. Anyway, you're a hero. Where, where did that one go? Uh, thank you, Luke. Who is your favourite Warhammer character and why? Warhammer character, Gabriel Angelos, because it's Dawn of War. Oh, yeah. Easy, smashed it. Mikey's a blood Quick person. fire. <laughs> Quick fire, thank you, Luke. Sean! But his, his Terminator backflipping is very funny, all right? It's not very serious, it's very funny. <laughs> Thanks, Luke. Anyway, Sean yeah. says, Thanks, if Luke. you had to give up gravy and move to Surrey to save your life, what method of execution would you pick? <laughs> uh, probably a bridge. Do you, eat, do you use a lot of gravy in your food? Not really, because, because Georgie loves to cook. And she's like, she lived in Italy for like a year. Yeah. So she's, she's not northern by blood, is she? She's no, Birmingham. No, yeah, Birmingham. Well, basically Birmingham. Yeah. Near, near Birmingham. So she's Midlands. So yeah, like, she doesn't cook much gravy-based stuff. But no. if there is gravy... She's bringing some culture into your life. It's not in a gravy boat, it's in a jug. You is know it? What I mean? Big you know fucking... Yeah, <laughs> litre in. Yeah, let's okay. go. Oh, and I guess my mum's for a Sunday, like, Sunday roast, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Seven Yorkshire puddings <sighs> and just a litre of gravy. 
Luce makes these Yorkshire puddings and they come out like this. Oh, wow. And the boys are just, that's the first thing they go through every yeah, time. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Thank you anyway, Sean. Don't, don't Appreciate you. How would, how would you be executed if you didn't want to move to Surrey and give up gravy? Or I, said, I said a bridge. Oh, a bridge, sorry, <laughs> yeah. you did say. Peter, does he Driving have... my car really fast into something, that'd be crazy. That'd just be so hype. <laughs> You know? Does Mikey have any idea on how to maintain, create competitive balance while still having flavourful rules and law built in? Oh, I think I think the answer is probably no. I don't know how that happens. I feel like, again, I think for a long time, Games Workshop have been very good at trying to, I mean, and like Tenth Edition, they've kind of like changed that ideology. I think they've been very good at capturing the narrative aspect of an army on the tabletop. I think most of the time they've nailed it or been very very close. Um, I think now they've tried to, they're trying to do all of it all at once. And I think they're struggling because they're trying to keep it simple, probably failing, but like it's a lot simpler than it was. You look at like 40k now, you look at 40k in seventh edition, Jesus Christ, you know is what? the game so easy? If they, if they'd have managed to do, if they'd have managed to do right rules in a, in a way that meant they didn't need 30 plus pages of designer's commentary to clarify it, yeah. I'd agree it's incredibly simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The simplicity, the, the issue with simplicity isn't in fact in the rules, it's in the fact that there's, it's clarified here and it's clarified here. And there's As we said, here. multiple publications that you need to read before you can play a game, right? Exactly. Because I understand why they made that. I understand why they made that FAQ, because so many big events, mine, UKTC, WTC, if you don't know these, UK tournament circuit, World Team Championships, all have their own FAQ. And every event does have its own FAQ because there's some things that just don't work and you need an answer. You know, yeah. Like for a big example is Abaddon with dark, old Abaddon, dark pact. Right? He if he is selected to shoot, he can dark pact gain a CP. The way the rules work is you could be selected to shoot and then select targets. So what would happen is Abaddon would sit behind a wall. He would dark pact, select selected as a target. He's got no target to shoot, but he would resolve his shooting by not doing anything and then gain a CP. Right? That's such a weird interaction that doesn't make sense. How is he? Why is he just sat behind the wall, getting erect, yeah. you know, by himself to <laughs> yeah. gain command points? Well, why wouldn't you? Well, yeah, fine, whatever. <laughs> he's it through the wall. You know that window we don't use anymore. That's yeah. what he's using it for. Just cut a little hole. <laughs> yeah, but that's such a strange interaction that, as as the rules are written, you can do. But obviously, that doesn't make sense. So there's loads of different events that rule it differently. Yeah. So not only have Games Workshop tried to fix that, but they've tried to go, right? Here's all the most common questions about the game. Here's an answer. And whilst that seems daft, it's a lot to take in, but it's also needed because the rules don't quite work. It is a yeah. band-aid on, on what could have been yeah. a different rule written once upon a time. But now they're just trying to fix it. So I understand why they're doing it. It's annoying if you're more casual because it's so much to take in and it makes the barrier to entry so high. But I also say this a lot of the time. If you're playing casually, you play once a year, do you care about the designer's commentary? No, well, no, quite. And you can play pull without your, it. Pull out your codex, use the, the points in the back of the book. If your opponent's arm is really broken, you're playing him once a year. But then, but then <laughs> there, there, is a, there, is a, there is a counter to that. If you're an Admech player, mm. right, and you're just going to use your Admech codex as is, yeah, and yeah. you play an Eldar player who's currently using Index as is, and yeah, you play yeah. once a year, as an Admech player, what's going to happen is you're going to quit 40k. Yeah, definitely. And then I, I had this conversation and then people were like, well, when I play random pickup games, I can't do that. I have to play the latest rules, yep. which I also can see in the guy. It's not something I considered. Well, this um, is, like, this is so Games Workshop's argument with legendsing so, many, so much stuff was like, you've still got Legends data sites, you can still use it. Mm. it. This is just for match play. I'm like, yeah, but people that play pickup games are not going to be happy when you pull out 10 Legends units. They just won't. Yeah. They want to they play the latest version. I it's think just the way it works. They've released an article recently, the first AOS Meta Watch. And they had a section, it's all about casual matched play. Yeah, I saw that. Which is kind of like, it's match play, but you can use legends. Yeah. And I think they should have always, when they came up with the three ways to play to save Age of Sigmar, first edition, have you seen the Jordan Sorcery video about Age, launch of Age of Sigmar? Absolutely fantastic, because I think we were both playing it. We both had an idea what was going on. But when someone tells you what happened over like four years in 30 minutes, it's actually wild what happened. Because Games Workshop launched AOS 1, no points. No. Measure to the model, not the base. And Archeon's on a base like this, and he's got a tail like that. And, uh, and Slayer of Kings is up here, so he can't reach. You know? And they just like had an idea. And they basically brought loads of people in from the community and came up with the concept of open, narrative, and mapped play. Okay? That's where it came from. Age, Age of Sigma 2, essentially. Because they relaunched the General's Handbook, and they get, we're like, we'll take all these community points. Because they basically, the community came up with these own points values, 
they came up with like... Uh, well, people were using wounds for a while. Yeah, they were like, wounds equal X amount of points type deal. They were like, we'll measure to the base and we'll do all these things. We'll come up with our own mission pack. And then they went, Games Workshop went like, actually, the game's not selling very well. So what we're going to do is bring all these people that wrote these custom packs, put them all in a room and come up with our own pack and call it General's Handbook. And that's where it first appeared. Yeah. And they came up with these three modes to play. But I think they were always missing number four as tournament play. Yeah, I agree. Because open, narrative, makes sense. But what if I just want a casual game? That's kind of matched. Yeah. Really, na casual games is open play. But that doesn't sound right. No. People are like, I want to play a casual pickup game. I'm going to play matched play. Whereas I think they should have always had a fourth category of tournament play, which is match play in a format. Or they could have gone, they could, yeah, <coughs> they could have gone casual narrative matched. Yeah, or the whatever. Casual could have had slightly more, more, slightly more structure yeah. to open. Because ultimately, most people play matched play but I think it's very different between match play on a Friday night or whatever and match play in the tournament. Agree. And now they've kind of come up with this concept of casual match play, which yeah. is basically match play is now tournament play and casual match play is what match play should have always been of balanced games. Yeah, yeah I agree. Because open play and narrative play don't have... Although at, at the, the very least... isn't At the very play. least, they're clearly spotting that and yeah. doing something... And that's something it. I really commend them for because I think that's a really... I think they should have done it five years ago. Yeah, obviously yeah. the work, the best time was five years ago. The the second best time is now. You know what I mean? Um, that that's like the I think that's the right direction. Basically, I think having this idea of four ways to play casual match play. Yeah, where you can play your legends because you're just having a balanced game, and then tournament play, no legends, no whatever. You must do this X Y Z. I'm a fan. So. Cool. Thanks so that anyway. Was very, that was a really good question. Sorry, it was too long. Thanks, Peter. It's fine. <laughs> Some of them will be. Thanks, Peter. Uh, Dan, he says, who's your favourite 40k character? We know that already. And then he says, who's your favourite Lord of the Rings character and would they be good company at the pub? Boromir. Boromir? Every time. <laughs> Every time. What a lad. Is it because he's got a northern accent? It's fucking Sean Bean, mate. <laughs> Who else are you going to pick? <laughs> so you've got Boromir and Gabriel Angelos at a pub. Are they going to be good company, won't you? Oh, shit, yeah. Because Gabriel's northern as well. Is he? Uh, a little bit. I, I yeah. can't remember. <laughs> He's got like four different voice actors. <laughs> Boromir would end up like beer bonging you down his horn. Yeah, Not that'd be so sick. Yeah. That'd be so cool. I reckon he can have his would just be like, just like backflip over the bar and pour some shots. Backflip over <laughs> the bar. Uh, he then says, if you weren't making 40k content, what would you be doing with your free time? Uh, playing video games. Yeah? yeah? Big video game fan? Yeah. I, I used to be a hell of a lot. And now I'm like very sporadic. I think I would... If I wasn't a YouTuber in Warhammer, I'd probably be a YouTuber in something else because I've always been very, like, video even if it wasn't, Even if it wasn't your career, even if it was just a spare time thing, you think you'd still be doing it? I don't know if I'd still be doing it. I would have definitely done it. Okay. You know? Um, I've done, like, made random videos in the past of just, like, me and my friends fucking about, you know what I mean? But I've always been, like, YouTube interested because it's something that when I was growing up, it got really popular. You know, like, 2012, 2013 when the YouTube was getting like 250 million views a year platform-wide, you know, that's like unheard of now. Mr. Beast gets that on one video. Yeah. Um, I was like I was like growing up with it, you know? I was like yeah. watching like PewDiePie and stuff like that. Like My kids game. find it absolutely baffling that when I was young, young, yeah, it yeah. didn't exist. Yeah. It wasn't a thing. Mm -hmm. Like my kids don't understand. My eldest who loves YouTube doesn't understand. Yeah. So what do you mean? I was like, when I was like when I was your age, we James. Didn't have iPads either. Yeah, when I was eleven. We had James, rocks. We, we smashed them together. <laughs> <laughs> there was no such thing Lug as YouTube. pies for everyone. Because <laughs> it came out in two thousand and two or two thousand and three or something. Something like that, yeah, yeah. yeah. So like so like yeah, because obviously, as I said, I was I was born in ninety four. Like when I was like teenager, YouTube was like the big thing. Fresh, like, yeah. Yeah, people were making like go edits of Taylor Swift at the time. You know, what I mean? <laughs> that remember is those? Great that video, yeah, by the way. Great, but yeah. like, and then I was watching a video the other day. Do you remember Charlie bit my finger? Yes. Do you remember that really viral video? Do you know it's like 25, 30 seconds in that actually anything happens? No. And it was like viral for like a year. Imagine if it was made now. People would like swipe. Five seconds gone. Not yeah. watching that. It'd yeah. be so heavily edited. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but like, yeah. So like when I was growing up, YouTube was like a big thing. And um, I was like always like, I, I, I did like, as I said, I was a bit of a drama kid. I was really into music. So I was like, I recorded an album as part of like my college course. And uh, I did media as well. Uh, so I was like making like short films and stuff like that. I made like music videos. They're all really bad. You'll never see them, okay? Unless we hit. Can I see them? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Please. No, it's not worth it. All right. <laughs> it's not worth the stick I'll get afterwards. <laughs> but I've always been like YouTube, like video. 
creation. I've always like found that really fascinating. You know, so I think. What I do we have to do to get to see one of those videos? <sighs> I revealed my band name when I hit like 450 members. And so everyone started finding stuff out about that. Because I was in a band um, and we were in the paper a few times uh, with me and my old housemate. And I'm not going to tell you the name. You have to go find it. Uh, but oh. uh, <laughs> but yes, yeah, so I've, I've always been like probably like performance centric, whether it's like on stage. I wasn't that big. I played a couple of pubs in Sheffield and Barnsley or whatever. That's some more spoilers. You can Google that. Um, and so I played a couple of pubs and stuff like that, and I really enjoyed that. I won a couple of battle of bands and shit, and then I was, like, making videos. And then, like, yeah, it was just kind of, kind of like Warhammer kind of came at the right time. I was always playing Warhammer when I was a kid. But then it, like, came back at the right time that I was, like, really exploring video creation. Yeah. And that's why I think I've made Warhammer videos, because I was, like, knee-deep in it. There's so many people that have that kind of similarish kind of background, and I find it really fascinating because I did I was nothing like that at mm. all. I was very my my like strongest academia was maths and science sure. and English, and I was, engineering was my career choice. So video production and creativity has been a brand new thing to me over the last yeah. seven years. Well, engineering was my career choice because I was supposed to be going to uh, Leeds College of Music, one of the best um, uh, music universities in the country, and my auntie was like. Yeah, that sounds really cool, Mikey. Like leaving college and going to go to university, or you get a job. <laughs> so that's what happened, and then yeah, that kind of like steered my creativeness and just shot it in the foot, basically. Oh, wow! And then I think I found that creativeness again, making videos whilst I was working. Yeah. And then here I am today. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Thank you, Dan. You legend, Adrian. Appreciate thank it. you. He says, "How did you get involved in getting a signature paint, and why did you choose that particular colour?" How they get him involved? Um, so I'm pretty close with the. Oh, no. Pretty much got my spray can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm pretty close to the guys at Colour Forge because they're a local company yeah. they're based in Sheffield, which is super cool. And I'm always for supporting because, like, I don't think I would have got where I I am without the people who support me. Yeah. Whether it's like my close friends, such as like Elliot and Tom and Ev and uh, Lambo and stuff like that. I'm not naming name everyone, but I love you all basically. Um, <laughs> but like. Also, like, the companies that helped me out as well. You know, like, I work, I've worked with, like, a bunch of companies across the years, and they've helped me out, whether it's, like, sent me free stuff, they want me to do stuff, like, like, they want me to come film or something. And, like, I'm always, like, if you help me, I'll help you type deal. Yeah. And that's always been my goal, because, like, whilst I joke about being an egocentric knobhead, I don't think I actually am. I like to pretend I'm one, yeah. but I'm actually not. I'm very, I feel like... It's almost like a persona, right? Yeah, I'm very, I'm very much like a 150 percent of myself on camera. I'm, a, I, yeah, I'm a little bit egocentric sometimes, but like the point, the point I'm trying to make, I don't know where that tangent's going. Uh, the point <laughs> I'm trying to make is they're a local company. I've got a lot of time for them. They helped me out with Super All Stars, the first one. Yeah, I was like, look, lads, I've got like 50 tables of terrain to paint, and they were like, do you want some? We'll do you a deal with some paint. And I was like, yes, yeah, let's go. And they're just really nice. They're really nice to work with. And I do genuinely believe in the product. Colourful stuff's amazing. Yeah, it's a, it's a really, really good product. I think it really fills a gap that Games Workshop started and left. Yep. You know? Um, and ultimately, they've taken that idea and ran with it. And I think they're doing really, really well. It's a great product. Yeah. You get more and pay less as well. Exactly. And like First first of all, yeah, just straight up. Yeah. Because uh, we've all been Halford pilled, let's be honest. We've all been to Halford's and bought grey and black. And that's more expensive now. And then Colourforge come in and they're like, well, we're cheaper than them as well. I'm like, all right. Yeah, sold. All right. <laughs> you know? Um, why'd I go for red? Blood, Blood Ravens. Ravens. Yeah. <laughs> Blood yeah. Ravens, bro. I don't ask that before. You, <laughs> you know? You know? So, like, yeah. So, I, I used to airbrush everything. And then um, I was like, they were like, we want to work with you because you're a local cool, cool kid. And I was like, I am the cool kid on the block and you're on my block. You know? So, um, and they were like, what sort of colour do you want? And I was like, look, I only play in Blood Ravens. They're kind of my thing. They were like, what about a base paint for them? I was like, that's pretty sick. Let's do that. Sounds amazing. So very jealous that you all got your own paints. It's very, very cool. It's Maybe it'll expand cool. one day. Um, but yeah, like they're just a great company to work with, but they're also a lot of people are like, why aren't you in the EU? Why aren't you in the US? It's like three dudes in an office, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then some and some production and some shipping. So, so you people in the UK, keep buying their stuff. Keep and buying maybe, it. Maybe they'll expand. And keep complaining that they're not in the EU or in the US yeah. because they want to be there. They just need not a kick up the bum, but they're just there's so much to work out. It's much harder complaining. now as well. Post yeah. Brexit, it's much harder to go out in the EU. You think about it. If I if I had my own paint, I would ship it on a plane. I would ship it on a boat. 
What about a pressurized can? Yeah. <laughs> you know, suddenly that's a few bit, bit more red tape. Yes, exactly. With, so. Thanks, Adrian. Anyway, Dan comes up with another one. Who does Mikey think he has a better chance against in a fight in a McDonald's drive through A custody sized Joe or a Joe sized custodies? <laughs> Custody size Joe. <laughs> he's just Roomba into something. <laughs> He'd be like the ordering. He's not listening. The order the ordering screen. He just walk into it, wouldn't he? <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Love you, Joe. <laughs> Kev, what's your view on the official rumor engine and not so official leaks? What would you change? What I change. So, the, so there's a, so obviously we've got the official rumor engine, which yeah, yeah. is the eight months in advance. Here's a little picture that you'll never see again, and then we'll probably never tell you if that was in fact the rumor engine or not. Yeah. And then there's obviously the not so official leaks that happen from people like Sam, which mm. there's the theory out there that that is official but not official. Like right. people are feeding it. So that's what you're talking about. Okay. What do I prefer? No. What's your view on them? And what? Would oh you, right. Okay. What would you change for GW's own like rumor system? Okay. I guess? If you want to put it out there, love Sam. I love Sam. Love Varek. He's a great guy. Yeah. Love him to bits. Leaks are leaks. They're just not good. Nobody likes them. If it, like when you're trying to work with something, it's getting leaked all the time. It's just frustrating. It causes loads of problems for everyone. And yeah, maybe I'm sat on my high horse and being like, well, all those people who worked on all them products and you're just leaking it two weeks early. It's like it is frustrating for everybody involved, including us, because it causes us drama, causes them drama. I understand why. You know, I get it. Um, and if I wasn't, you know, like I, I, if I wasn't involved with GW, I would probably be like looking at those leaks as well. You know what I mean? I try and avoid them. Yeah. Um, but like, if I wasn't part of it, I would also be hyped. And I understand why people get hyped about the leaks. It's just from a very uh, selfish view, and probably for GW as well, it just kind of be annoying to work around them. Mm -hmm. um, but also, I think the way GW do it, the rumor engines, as you mentioned, I just don't think they're very good. No, they're not. <laughs> because like, I agree. if it was like two weeks before they launched a the model and they went, oh, actually, here's that bit. Remember that bit you saw? Here it is. Yeah, yeah. It's on this bit. And they, could like almost, they could do, like, they could do like an eight-week lead with a little bit each time. It's like a bit to the puzzle picture. And you could, you know what? They could do those stuff with it. Yeah. What they do, they go, here's an image eight months ago that, that is really zoomed in. And then... At and some they'd point, never address it. At some point, yeah. we'll release a model when you'd have to go, hang on, was was that what that was? Yeah. If I remember that that even existed in the first place. No, exactly, because I, I, I couldn't tell you any rumor engine images that I've actually gone and gone, yeah, that, yeah. that was that bit. Um, I think the way Games Workshop are releasing models is really strange because it seems to be telling us so far in advance, by the time they come out, you've already kind of like forgot about it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, like the Warcry box that's coming out this weekend with the Bone Reapers and the Sylvan FN that's on pre-order Saturday, right? When did that get announced? Like I six months ago? I don't remember. I've been thinking about that box because I love Bow Reapers. I've been thinking about that box for, for ages. Are we, are we don't, we're not getting one. Unlucky. Maybe they like me more. Maybe they like Maybe me should more. have broke the game more. Yeah. Oh, probably. Yeah. It's only because we've only, we've only recently turned on our AOS support again because yeah. we turned it off for a while. Yeah. Because uh, when we got asked, what are you going to cover, I was brutally honest because mm -hmm. I was like, I'm, I don't want to lie to you. And then you send me a load of shit that I don't do anything with. I don't want to be another one of those Instagrammers like, thanks for the box. There you go, and put it back on my oh, shelf. Hey, call me out. I did that the other day. <laughs> <laughs> no. Thanks, Kevin. Anyway, you're a hero. Yeah. Sam. Side, side tangent. Warcry is an excellent game. I've heard. Excellent game. Yeah. So good. I bought the... The rules um, are so tight. The, the game's really enjoyable. I think it's Warcry where I bought the Lumineth. Um, essentially Harlequins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're yeah, yeah. stunning models. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you, Kev. I love you. Sam, if you could eat only one fruit for the rest of your life, what would it be? Strawberries. Oh, I fucking love strawberries. So good. It's so good. I was going to say banana because I eat those consistently, but strawberries are just expensive. Mm. <laughs> you know, you can't buy loads of strawberries. They have to keep them for special fancy. occasions. Uh, thanks, Sam. Did you know in Japan, they're so hard to get all the strawberries that they keep, they like present them in like boxes. Do they? Individual, yeah. I fucking love strawberries. Yeah. I have strawberries literally every day. They're just like so hard to import, but they're also some of the best strawberries in the I in buy the world. a nice bag of Morrison's mixed berries. Oh, yeah, yeah. Fucking big wonky, big frozen bag you buy. In the morning, I pour a bit of it into a bowl, microwave it up so it's not so hard to, on my teeth, cover it in Greek yogurt and honey. That does sound nice, but frozen strawberries. Yeah, Microwaved. Yeah. yeah I, you sound like me. <laughs> <laughs> Brother. I, I Get him got, in a box. I haven't got time in the morning, Mikey. <laughs> All right. I haven't got time. Okay. Uh, thanks, thanks, Sam. Thanks, Kev, Kev says, favourite okay. edition of 40k and why? Favourite edition? Probably ninth edition if I could look at the last three months. Yeah, okay. Because it was peak. Because it was really good at that it point. Was really it was dialed good. in, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. I, loved the, I loved the aspect of balancing the game with faction secondaries. I think they 
worked out how to do it properly toward the end. But like the idea that you could balance the game with rules or points or how the, the army functions on the table in terms of scoring, yeah. I thought that was really fascinating. And then they threw that in the bin. I loved it. I loved the end of ninth actually. Yeah, I'll be honest. Yeah, I um, like seventh because it was so stupid. I, I so <laughs> again seventh. I love seventh uh, before all the formation shit came out. Yeah, um, it was there, funny. there was a couple of little nuances where you could make a wraith knight invisible, and so I won a tournament D weapons. with a warhound, right? Warhound titan with a librarius conclave, three librarians that rerolled basically. Long story short, cast really well. I made it invisible. And then I put it on terrain and moved it around the board. And then I also... With the geokinesis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, oh, then, ig seven. and then ignored line of sight with my turbo lasers, which were D cannons. Between links, so you scattered, re-rolled, you scattered. And if it rolled a one, it did nothing. If it rolled a two, it basically killed it. If it rolled a six, it really killed it. Uh, like it killed an Imperial Knight one shot, for example. And I've got two of them. And then I had a line of 50 conscripts with KOTS, the cool model, not the new one. <laughs> <laughs> That if anything deep struck near it, you could overwatch, but on threes or fours or whatever. Just overwatch as normal ballistic skill. <laughs> Great, stupid time. I loved it. And I won a tournament. It was like 80 people. It was so sick. It was the first proper big tournament I won. And then I played it again in another tournament, RTT, and a guy brought two town hours. And they did the same thing to me. They went first and went bang, bang. I love, love Seven yeah, cool. so much. Love because it's terrible. Samuel John said, if you woke up in the 40k universe, what faction would you hope to be with and why? Oh, on a moral standpoint or just who's winning <laughs> moral standpoint they're all terrible yeah who's winning probably the human just because it makes sense because I am one you know I am a human I don't know I don't know I guess mostly a human I'm a beast kind of yeah. I'm, Thanks, a, I'm an animal maybe I'd be something else yeah. I'd probably be Nurgle let's be honest I'm northern and stinky I mean fair <laughs> David, thank you. He says, if 40k didn't exist, what would be your fallback for content? We've done that, video games already. Yeah, video games or probably like long form philo philosophical essays about anime. And then you know, you said <laughs> what bit made you laugh. Uh, are you nervous to be in front of an audience larger than three people tonight? Uh, how many subscribers have you got? <laughs> uh, not enough at the moment to fight that fight. No, not you, him. Oh. No, them, whoever that is. You, you, well, if it's you, fits Liam. <laughs> uh, How many subscribers they got? Go on, tell me. David, are probably less than three. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Nick, Kaz, thank you. Do you think 40k or AOS necessarily need more story setting advancement, or can both exist largely in a state of stagnation in terms of narrative? Uh, me personally, yes. As a thing as a whole, probably no. I think they tried stagnation with Abaddon on his 13th Black Crusade, right? And I think 40k has only grown since they stopped doing that. And they kind of like let the time, the clock go. Yeah, they broke, broke KD and all that kind of shit. Yeah, I think that's only made it more exciting from like a story aspect. I, I, I'm inclined to agree, but I, I do wish they would remove a little bit of plot armour from certain people. Yeah, I think, I think they should probably think about killing off characters but leaving them in the tabletop. Yeah. Because he killed Eldrad and brought him back. Like, yes. It's fine that he's dead. Just You are playing in the time period that that would work. Exactly. You know? And just every character that you bring out, just they were always there, you know? And then they were always, it always works. If Eldrad's dead, but you've got this new character who's not dead, well, he was always there. They don't mind doing that once in a while, <laughs> do they? <laughs> <laughs> Nick, thanks for that. <laughs> Richard says, as a person who has done a hot tub stream, have you done a hot tub stream? I did do a hot tub stream. Is there such a thing as a meme too far? No. He says see above example, but I don't know what, I don't know what the above example is. But <laughs> okay. Uh, he also says... So if there's a meme too far, as long as it's not hurting anyone, no. I think he, when he says see above example, I think it's when, when David put an audience larger than three people as a meme I too far. I had fucking like 80 people watching that stream. It's still public today. The I was watching did the, the Beast Snagger reveal in a very, very cold paddling pool. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love you. <laughs> he then, he's got a couple more, right? What's the most expensive bit of Warhammer hobby that you own? Warhammer stroke hobby, so it doesn't have to be Warhammer. Uh, I don't know. You own... I don't know. I don't know, to be honest. I own a Revenant Titan. So I used to have the Titans. I used to have, like, a... I had a Reaver Titan. I had a Warhound Titan. Oh, yeah, I own a Warhound, but it's in Joe's house to be fixed. So I swapped, swapped a Warhound... Or a Nurgle army, and then I swapped a Reaver Titan 
for a flight to the Vegas. Um, Reasonable swaps, both of them. Yeah. I don't really... I bought a wetter workshop Gandalf. Oh, did you? Like, on Friday, I was so incredibly... I saw you looking. I made a show about you yesterday. I, made, <laughs> I, made, I was so incredibly <laughs> flabbergasted by the cost of the Abaddon. Yeah. But then I found the Lord of the Rings section. Uh -huh. How much was Gandalf? $400. Okay. Plus 100 bucks shipping. Plus tax on the way in. So it's, it's going to be like that. five, six hundred. No, it says calculate tax and shipping. Oh, okay. So I don't know where it comes from. I was from, wondering about import you, tax. Yeah, all. so you pick that you're in the UK and it distributes it from okay. somewhere else, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Um, so I reckon it's going to be about four, five hundred quid once it's all done. Yeah. Um, that'll um, probably be my most expensive thing that I own hobby-wise, I guess. I don't, I don't, if I'm not including like technology to make content. No, it's not really. I mean, that is kind of a hobby, I guess, yeah. though. Yeah, yeah, because like, I don't really know. It should be, I'm trying to like rack my brain. If I'm not including like cameras or a computer. Yeah, gaming PC is expensive, yeah. Yeah, it'd just be like, pff, I don't have anything crazy expensive, I've got loads of it. Yeah. yeah. Like my collection of Warhammer is very expensive if you add it all together. I don't know, let me sit on that one. Okay. I've always wanted the fucking Blood Raven statue. Red sauce or brown sauce? Oh. Ne neither. The Blood Raven statue? You know the one from Dawn of War 2 that Midwinter Winnie's got and repainted and made me cry? Yeah. I want one of those. Okay. Where can it, you that, get them? I don't know, guy in a scrapyard by the sounds of it. Uh, so, sorry, that will be red sauce or brown sauce. Neither. Neither. Yeah, gross. You don't like either of them. Nope. Tea or coffee? Coffee. Oh. I had. To, I've had two teas. Joe made you tea. We I had was driving coffee. down and I really fancied a cup of tea. Okay. I think it's because I left the north. It's because you're in the south. <laughs> Why is Yorkshire tea so overrated? Since it is well, it is well for its vast tea fields. Can you ban that person? Who, <laughs> Richard? Yeah. Why? Ban them. Because they're dis destroy trying to like talk shit about Yorkshire tea. I know that's not Yorkshire tea. It's peachy tips. Yeah, I can tell. Peachy tips is fine. Only because I like peachy. But he also drinks Yorkshire tea. He came here and got given peachy tips. Well, he he chose the branding, all right? <laughs> do, you know, do you know the spiffing Brit? You watch yes. him? He's got a, a Yorkshire tea wrapped car. Is he? Yeah. Amazing. He's a legend. I met him once. He was so nice. Thanks, Richard. Anyway, you're a legend. Alex, do He's you not. know... <laughs> it's not Ian sort of Yorkshire tea. Do you know who Valrak's informant inside Gay's Workshop is? Blink once for yes, blink twice for no. I've got no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I've got no idea. There's right. loads of rumours out there. I've got no I, idea. I'm pretty sure it's from Injured Aside DW. Sam will never tell me. I don't, I don't want him to, to be quite honest. I don't want to know that. Um, it's got nothing to do with me. That's up to them. I don't uh, think they like Valrax content. That's all I'm about to say. <laughs> we'll talk about that afterwards. Alex, thanks for that. Jill, what is your biggest hobby regret? Probably getting rid of my Reva. Yeah? Yeah. And then she says, what is your favourite and most unhinged Games Workshop conspiracy theory? The favourite as in I believe or favourite? The favourite one you've ever... It doesn't, I don't think you have to believe it. It could be the, like, the most wild... I think a lot of it is probably going to come down back to Valrak that they think that it's all official. Mm. I, don't, I have <laughs> no idea. That's a funny one. I don't know if I, so, so I think he's being fed from Inside Games Workshop 100%. But that's I don't just, think officially. But there is a conspiracy theory that management are letting it happen because it's great for advertising. I'm like, I'm not sure uh, about that. On the one hand, I kind of get the, the, the thought process. I just don't think they like it. No. Like they, Games Workshop are very old school. We know that. I know that. You know that. They wouldn't do that on purpose. I don't, I don't Unless they are. That'd be crazy. If they are, the old, if they do the old, what's it called, and twist. <laughs> the yoink and twist, yeah. <laughs> as, as I said, we've spoken about Marek a few times. I'm like, you know what? If I was a Warhammer YouTuber, I would probably do the same thing. You know what I mean? But like, I can understand the other side where it can be so frustrating for people who are working on the thing yeah, that's getting absolutely. linked all the time. As I said, Fair play to him. He's know. doing incredibly he, well. He does his thing. He he's doing he incredibly wants. well, and he's genuinely a nice guy. He is. So I love him to bits. I don't. I don't begrudge. I hate the content, but I don't begrudge him for it. Yeah. Uh, As I said, we'd all do the same thing. Let's be honest. Your favourite, Richard, who um, was correct about Yorkshire. He said, "Raid Shadow Legends." Yes or no? <laughs> I like it. That was a thumbnail for Kirios. Right? Yeah. Uh, I've made multiple offers, uh, counter offers to them, and they've always said no. So that was yes. So you would? Yeah. Fuck what yeah. Kind of, what kind of counter offers? You can tell them. You tell us. Uh, I, wants I, I don't like, think that'd be fair I okay. could like come out with numbers um, but oh because Kyrgios was like a titan <laughs> yeah Get, buy me a titan yeah I've done mobile game ads in the past you really? know what I mean yeah I, the, the, probably the most the one with most views is when I made a uh, eight bound into an anime character and I promoted a game with very <laughs> concerning animal characters nice <laughs> cool 
Uh, I said, and I, I think I said something like, you can't buy this cake because it's sold out, just like I did with this mobile game after. <laughs> <laughs> and they were fine with it, so... I love yeah, it. Yeah. James, thank you, says, who's your favourite law YouTuber? Law YouTuber? Uh, I, I think probably three weeks ago, I would probably say Lutin. But I've, I've started watching Pancreas No Work, and he's quite funny. Okay. He's quite new, and he's exploded a little bit. I would say Lutin is up there, but Pancreas No Work needs a shout out. I don't know the other one. I only know Lutin. Yeah, he's good. Oh, those two. He's funny. I'll check it out. I was watching it. He was doing like a, he did a, a good video of like, what if no, what if the end times and happened, but the chaos didn't blow up the planet, and it was kind of like, what would be happening now in the old world? That's quite cool. interesting. It was, yeah, it was like, what if they've got ten thousand chaos warriors from the north, not hundreds of thousands, because where the fuck did they come from? Yeah. And I was like, yeah, that's a, that's quite funny that. So. I need, you need to send me the, the name because I'll forget yeah. what that is and I'll check that out. Which is also prevalent for the next question. Kev says, as a setting, which do you prefer, prefer sci-fi or fantasy? Uh, I think that's really a really tough question. I like a lot of sci-fi and I like a lot of fantasy. I don't know which one I would like prefer. I think if I had to choose, I'd probably say sci-fi. Yeah? You know, Warhammer, Star Wars, Armored Core 6, you should play it. Uh, <laughs> See, I'm the flip. I'm fantasy. Yeah. I'm Lord of the Rings over Star Wars. But I love day. Lord of the Rings. I love Dark Souls. I love Elden Ring. Um, so yeah, I think I think it's very close. If I had to choose, if I'm gun to good to my head, I'd say sci-fi. Okay, interesting. I like that question. Yeah. Our favorite good Warhammer YouTube channel. Oh, fucking let me know when there is one. <laughs> you want me to say Liam? No. It's Liam's channel. We, I don't think we're very good. <laughs> No, I think I think everybody because the problem is is I can't really answer because I know a lot of them personally, um, but yeah, the one I, the ones I click on are I click into your streams a lot, but I don't I won't lie I, I don't sit and watch all the streams. If you made shorter videos, I watch it a lot more. I'd love to skip through your videos and have a nose of what you're on about. Midwinter Minis and Squidmar are probably the ones I and Eons of Battle. They're the okay. ones I I watch most consistently, and I probably probably a lot of it comes down to. One, I know Guy, and I'm very good friends with Guy. Uh, but two, I also look at them, and I'm like, they are like peak Warhammer. I should be doing something similar. How yeah, they've done I, very how well can with, I improve? with their content. But I don't, so all, and the other hat on the flip side, is it because they're my favourite, or is it because I'm envious and I'm trying to emulate? I mean, envious can also link to being your favourite, because yeah. you're like, that's, I think that's good content, I want to do something similar. Yeah. Interesting. I think, okay. I think there's a lot of... I, I love everybody who makes Warhammer content, and I watch a lot of it. Some people, I'm sometimes watching a guy with like 300 subscribers and leaving comments, you know what I mean? Because oh, really? I'm just like, yeah. Oh, bless you. Yeah, I'm just like. We've done that before. We've raided a couple of people that size. Yeah. Which is it's such a heart, heartfelt moment sometimes. Yeah. So heartwarming. Because there's a YouTuber I always watch, and he's got like, I can't remember how many subscribers he's got. He's called Alex Attempts Tabletop, and he makes little Warhammer videos. And I think he's just the best guy. He's doing his thing. And then there's a, there's like another channel. That I recently watched on on the stream, and he's just like this old man, like talking about his fantasy army, and he's just like, "Hello, yeah. friends, how's it going, friends?" And I I feel awful for not remembering YouTube names, but it's just <laughs> this is what it is. But he's just like, yeah, I just think anyone who goes out there and makes content is amazing. Yeah. If I really had to choose, the three that I always watch are probably those three, right? Amazing. But I watch a lot of Warhammer content because one curious what everyone's doing so I can learn yoink and twist uh, but also too I just like keeping up with like, my friends yeah, oh bless you yourself. mate Kev uh, thank you. thanks for that Carl that's a good question Kev says you must purge one space marine first founding chapter which do you choose and why Iron Hands why because everyone shouts at me for always playing Iron Hands <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, Iron Hands uh, painted red <laughs> yeah red hands uh, the Blood Angels now so who knows yeah uh, one space marine as in 30k? Let's find it. Oh, Let's chapter. Find a chapter. Chapter. Yeah. They've all got their own aspects of why they're nice, but I'm not mega excited about Raven Guard. Oh, I'm so sorry. Say quietly. You can hear it. You can hear me. You can come in and tell me if you want to. That's happy out with me. <laughs> but yeah, they're just like, yeah, guys in power armor being super sneaky. All right, then. <laughs> it's more the emo haircuts that get me. Oh, the emo haircuts much. are just funny, yeah. My chemical romance lovers, yeah, whatever. Yeah. We've all been there. Uh, Go through a phase. Thanks, Kev. Josh says, why why Mikey, the number tournament organizer? Right, I'm going to add some words in for him because I think number I know two. what he's trying to say. <laughs> why is Mikey the number one tournament organizer? As I said, I don't organize tournaments, I organize events. Yeah. I make it fun. You know, it's about an experience whilst you're there. Also, there's Warhammer. That's yeah. what I think. Thanks, uh, thanks, Josh. Old man, we, we man. 
Uh, are, do you know we ran to do pop up in your stream? Oh, are you narrative or competitive for 40k and why? I think we've kind of got over that a lot. If yeah, we have. Far. I'm definitely more focused on competitive. I enjoy the narrative. I enjoy the idea of a game. You know, like I enjoy what's happening, but like, yeah, the medium of narrative is is hard for me. Kev has asked. Thanks, we man. Okay. Kev has said, if you could give Liam one piece of advice to turn him into a successful YouTuber, what would it be? Make shorter videos. Yeah, well, I I think I need to. Yeah, that'd be my thing. I like I do like what I do. I, and that's no, okay to steal. Do what I do. I like the fact that you pull it out of your stream and put it on a video because I then watch it and. And can keep up to date with what we've talked about, but I also it's more work. I, no, 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 no. I don't think it'd be that hard. But I also it's know hard, in the heart, in the past, how much you've ripped me for copying your content. Yeah, and I'll rip you if you do that as well. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, uh, Sam. How do you feel about large bearded men asking you questions? Um, it's all right. It's just normal weekend. Yeah, just standard day to day. Yeah. Let's be honest. If I'm live streaming, it's probably bearded men that are watching as well. Joe has asked. Hi, if, Joe. If you were cooking me dinner on a date, what would you make? Ooh, I would make sausage pasta. Sausage pasta! <laughs> Not a euphemism either. No. So, like, because so like, it's my favourite meal that Georgie makes, and it's really tasty. Pasta with, like, a white creamy sauce with some veg, like broccoli and peppers and stuff, with sausage. Okay. It's like an Italian dish. Is it? It's got a proper name, but it's sort of, I, call it, fucking I call it sausage Richmond pasta. thick cut sausages chopped in there. Chopped up sliced, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> That's what I'd make, Joe. Thanks, Joe. With, a, with a white wine. Yeah? Yeah. Really Candles. Nice. Definitely. Three, at least. Thanks, Joe. Rambo. <laughs> I love the fact nowadays he always asks questions in Thane's questions while he sits there every single it. time. Rambo, He's like, they haven't got enough. Let's get another one in. <laughs> how, do you, how do you eat your steak? Uh, medium rare. If not blue. Okay, he just he, he went on to say that only acceptable answers are rare and medium rare, depending on cut. Uh, with a fork, most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking love a rare steak. Uh, thanks, Rambo. Joseph, without including the average human, which race faction of the current 40k universe would you be and why? Without the, the average... What? So if you remove Imperial Guard, okay. if you move Astro Militarum altogether, which race or faction of the current 40k universe would you be? I'd be Nurgle. Be yeah, he's he's be, be he's fat and stinky. Joseph, he would be a Nurgling. Ah, oh, that'd be fun. Or a plague bearer. Yeah, a little bouncer. A little Nurgling, being a little bit sassy. My favourite question so far. James says, Hi, James. fuck, marry, kill. Liam, boxy, Valrak. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, oh. All right, all right, all right. All right. I, I know the answer. I would fuck Valrak because I say fuck Valrak all the time. Mm -hmm. But also, just get out of my system, you know? Yeah. I feel like there's a bit of tension there. A bit of hate fuck. Yeah. <laughs> you get it, get it, get it one and done, and then I can say I've done it. Yeah. You know? Whether I liked it or didn't, I've done it. Um, I would marry Boxy because I feel like it'd just be good for my career, you know? Be like, be like a king queen country's marriage, but that leaves you. I'm afraid. You're on I the am block. holding comments back right now. <laughs> uh, you're you. on the chopping block, I'm afraid. <laughs> and also, this is being recorded and put out to live audience. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, James. He's lied, by the way. Uh, Jake says, if you could add and remove one rule from 40k, what would they be? Add and remove. Ah, uh, oh, I don't know. Add the rule that I spoke about a video the other day. Add that, is that, does that count? It's like part of a rule being added? The clarification to pivot. Yeah. Having yes. every vehicle de deal with it rather than just... Yeah. Because the first thing go spotted was just like, you could just spin around 360 for free. What the hell? Um, I, I feel like there's a bit of a cop-out though. I would add you have to have more fun. That's also a cop-out. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I'd add. I think, I think, I might remove. I'd remove secret missions. I think it's so weird. I think I understand the concept. I they're a bit all over the place, aren't they? They were really bad, and yeah. now they're kind of really good. They feel too good now. They are, yeah, we've played, like I think, 90% of the games we've played on the stream with them so far, they've ended in a secret mission winning it. Yeah. I feel like, yeah, it's like, I don't know what I'd add, but I think... It feels like secret missions are a necessity because yeah. of the whole point of them is, like, if you're losing by turn three, you've at least got something to play for. But I feel like now they're too good. I'd remove actions. Okay. I'd remove actions immediately. I fucking hate actions. I don't mind them. I get it. 
Yeah, no, I get, I get. So someone said to me about about flexibility of the mission and the gameplay. I'm like, yeah, but Mouse from Reward did that, and it didn't have any actions. Yeah, um, so I remove actions, and I. I get add, raised in a banner, but the other ones I don't understand. And I miss. I miss one of the things I miss the most is initiative. Mm, but with going back to playing Horus Heresy and uh, an old world, I'm a bit like. Yeah, there is a little bit. So we we played Heresy on the stream recently, and it was fucking amazing. But I think it's mostly from a nostalgia perspective rather than yeah. from a simplified functional rules perspective. Yeah. Like definitely. I think going out to an audience of Heresy, a lot of people are like, "What the fuck is going on? Yeah. Is it so complicated?" Yeah. Uh, so Sean's final question, which pie is the best pie? Steak and kidney, every day. I don't mind steak and kidney. What do you mean you don't mind I steak prefer and steak and ale. Uh, okay, yeah, steak and ale, fine. Kidney, I don't got that bit of texture. So I'm not, I'm not that's, texture. that's the thing. That's a, you did a good job of quick fire there. That's taken like 40 minutes. Okay. And that was like one Kirioff answer. Exactly. <laughs> I, love, I love Kirioff so much. You've done a good job. Yeah. Okay. It's Thanks to fun. all the Danes. You people are amazing. Thanks, Danes. Those are really good questions. And if I gave you a crap answer, sorry. He's Just go really to my sorry. stream and ask me again. He's not sorry. Via super chat. You should. You, uh, <laughs> so you, you lot absolutely should go to Mikey's streams as well. Although awkwardly, we we typically have some overlap in when we stream. Although but Wednesdays you, is you normally stream every night. <laughs> yeah, but Wednesdays is like a daytime normally. morning stream. Yeah, I do the morning news where I talk about things that aren't necessarily tabletop. Yeah, I talk about general general funny news. The daytime stream on Wednesday, which is we're not live then at all. Uh, but otherwise, Mikey streams on Mondays and Fridays. There is a degree of overlap. Yeah, I think that happens though. I think a lot of people get like really shirty about, well, that's my time. People, I've had people message me and say, when are you streaming? I'm like, this time, why? Well, I want to deconflict. It's like, just do your thing. Yeah, just, just, just go for it. Yeah, I'll just watch other people stream and laugh at them when I they're doing it. I absolutely you know? welcome competition. I think it's good for everybody. It's yeah. good for the audience if they've got options and variety. It's good for each other so we can compete because it's a friendly competition. If yeah. I see you do something that I think is really, really good, it, it will inspire me to go, how do I improve? Because you don't copy my thumbnail. You know what I mean? That's all I care about. <laughs> <laughs> like you were streaming last night and I just came on your stream and started chatting shit while you were painting it's with amazing, my stream. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm just like, yeah, go on. I'm painting my Ember spells so I can actually play OS. You're yeah, not allowed to play OS without manifestations. No. They're all called uh, manifestations, not Ember spells. Mikey's so. content, um, I take the piss a lot, chat, right? I know it's not, it's not. You're two hours into this podcast. You haven't subscribed now. I'm fucking. It's I've not hidden it. how much I take the piss out of Mikey. I love the human. He's incredible and his content's great. So you should check out Hellstorm Wargaming. He's on Twitter. He's on Instagram. You're on Facebook. You're everywhere, right? As everyone in this I industry is. On Facebook, just because yeah. I have to be. Yeah. Exactly. Instagram and Twitter are the two places. Instagram Probably Twitter. Twitter. And then, two and people then want YouTube. funny memes. Like I, said, pictures. like I said right at the start of the stream, right? they will all be linked below. If you haven't already, make sure you go click that little button to help some more game in and hit the subscribe if you haven't yet. You should have done by you now. Should have. Yeah. Uh, his content's awesome. If you don't want to watch the streams because we're live, he's got the videos that launch after the fact where he actually summarises shit. Yeah, it, like the most important bit of the stream, I'll probably put out as a video anyway. Yeah. But you can get involved in the conversation on the stream. Yeah. You, you're the, in my opinion, the third player. You know, there's me, the topic, and the chat. So... What? It's not cringe at all. Well, you can you can say it's cringe all you want, <laughs> but I got twenty thousand views on a video <laughs> with the chat, where they're all laughing at my production skills. It's it's I like I love it. I think you're doing a great job. I think if you keep doing what you're doing, you'll you'll do well anyway. Thanks, bud. Thanks, bud. You I, know what? It's oh. not for me to tell you that though. That's a Kodak moment. <laughs> oh. I you, can't wait to get these developed. <laughs> already, already ten thousand higher than we are. So you're amazing. You're a good human. You're good for the community. And uh, yeah, again, check out the newsletter, wherever it is you find that stuff. Healthsofwargaming.com to find all that shit. We've got UK. Yeah. UK. If you bought a thing on the website, you already signed up. If not, keep an eye on my tweets. I put, put my newsletter on there. Yeah, so. have a look at that because the events, I'm, I'm, I'm going back some years when I went to the last one, but Joe went to the one last year, said it was great. So keep an eye out on those as well because I think I'm going to go to another one every year if I can. Yeah. Um, I, do, I do like two types of events. I do smaller events, which are based at Sanctuary, which are like smaller, 50 to 60 man or 60 person, I should say. And... Um, they're like, if you've never been to an event, that's what I recommend. Yeah. If you've never been to an event, you're going to go to a big one. You're very brave, but you'll be fine. You know. Yeah. If you've never been to an event, I'd recommend always recommend a smaller one. But yeah, that's what I try and do. It's it's like it's an event, not a tournament. You're not just there to play Warhammer. I'm going to make you have a good time. Yeah. And if you won't, I'll make, and, I'll and force it. As a human being, he's an absolute great sidekick to Warhammer's favorite creator, Georgie. It's true. It's true. <laughs> I've, been kicked, I've been cut out of every video that she's involved with. I'm always just there, stood there as the mic stand. 
Do you know what? Fucking fair enough. I left that <laughs> out. Like, if she starts her own channel, <laughs> I have fucked it. I right? left that out of the whole interview. I was told to chuck it in there. I've mentioned it four times. I've named dropped it four times. This, this thank you so well. much for coming down today and doing this anyway. Thanks, bud. We You're appreciate a beautiful it. human. I hope we'll get you down again in the future to do another one. We can talk about some other stuff. To move um, further north. Jesus, oh, I don't like it. You're literally on the coast. It is, yeah, it's great. Literally top to bottom of the country I did today. Like I said at the start, if you guys have watched this at the point where live, thank you so much for being channel members. You're amazing. We appreciate you. Uh, if you've watched it when it goes live and you want to catch the new ones early, you can become a channel member. Otherwise, make sure you hit all those magical buttons for us. Like the stream, like the stream, like the video if you enjoyed it. You can thumbs down if you hate it. Do like that you, too. you it's amazing people engagement. watching. <laughs> Thank you, That's only because it's on the back engagement. <laughs> Click through. Give him the green arrows. I'll just go away. It's true. It's <laughs> true. Engagement hall. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. <laughs> <laughs> that fucking flash. <laughs>